Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku was transformed. If you guys enjoy this movie comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story XX Average Zombie XX from Fan Fiction. So let's start the video. The sun was setting over the Yue University campus, casting a warm golden hue over the buildings. The evening breeze carried the scent of freshly cut grass and the faint sounds of students wrapping up their day. I was on my way to visit Katsuki Bakugo, my longtime rival and begrudging friend. He lived off campus in a small apartment that was as messy as his explosive temper. I knocked on his door, and after a few moments with no response, I tried the handle. It was unlocked, so I let myself in. Kakin, I called out, stepping into the cluttered living room. The sound of running water from the bathroom suggested he was busy. I glanced around, noticing the usual disarray, clothes strewn about, dishes piled in the sink, and a general sense of chaos that seemed to follow Katsuki wherever he went. My attention was drawn to his dresser, where something strange caught my eye, a metallic ball glinting in the fading light. Curiosity got the better of me, and I wandered over, picking it up. Kakin, what's this? I asked aloud, even though I knew he couldn't hear me over the sound of the shower. The sphere felt oddly warm, almost alive, in my hand. As I examined the ball, it suddenly began to glow with an intense blue light. My heart raced as the world around me seemed to twist and churn. The room blurred, and my body felt like it was dissolving into light. Panic set in, and I could no longer feel the ground beneath my feet. I was a ball of light, zipping around the room erratically. My vision spun wildly until I found myself hurtling toward the floor in front of a mirror. There, sitting in plain view, was a flashlight. I crashed into it, and everything went dark. When I came to, I felt confined, my body immobile. I tried to move, but nothing responded except for my eyes, which blinked open to reveal an unexpected sight. I was staring at the ceiling from a low angle, and in front of me was a mirror. In the reflection, I saw the flashlight, but it had my eyes, wide with horror and disbelief, perched right above its entrance. Panic surged through me as I tried to comprehend my situation. I attempted to blink, to look around but I could only see straight ahead. The realization that I was trapped in this form began to set in, and I felt a wave of nausea, though my new body couldn't respond to it. The water stopped running, and I could hear the faint sound of Katsuki moving around in the bathroom. My heart, or whatever semblance of a heart I now had, pounded as his footsteps echoed through the small apartment. Each step sounded like a giant stomp, reverberating through my confined space. My vision was fixed on the mirror, and I could see the doorway reflected within it, dread building with every second. Katsuki emerged, steam billowing behind him. He was covered only in a towel, water droplets glistening on his muscular frame. His blonde hair was damp, spiked in wild directions. He rubbed a towel over his head as he made his way into the room completely unaware of my plight. Every step he took seemed to shake the ground, each movement a reminder of how powerless I was. In the mirror, I watched as he approached, his figure growing larger and more imposing with each step. He tossed the towel aside, revealing his well-defined abs and the rest of his chiseled physique. His presence was overwhelming, both familiar and terrifying in this new perspective. I saw his hand reach for me in the reflection, rough and calloused from years of training. My vision jerked as he picked me up, gripping my new form without a hint of hesitation. His movements were casual, routine, and I was helpless to stop him. Katsuki's fingers closed around me, and I felt a shift in perspective as he lifted me from the floor. My view spun wildly, catching glimpses of the ceiling and the walls, disorienting me further. The movement stopped, and I found myself face to face with his member. It was inches away from my eyes, throbbing and glistening with beads of sweat. The skin was taut, veins prominent, and I could see every minute detail with horrifying clarity. The heat radiating from it was palpable and the musky scent filled my senses, overwhelming me. As he adjusted his grip, my eyes were drawn upward to his abs. They were well-defined, each muscle clearly visible and flexing with every slight movement he made. The ridges and valleys of his abdominal muscles were mesmerizing, a testament to his rigorous training and discipline. His chest rose and fell steadily, each breath emphasizing the powerful physique he had honed over the years. Despite the sheer terror of my situation, I couldn't help but acknowledge the raw physical power Katsuki possessed. My vision remained locked on the intimidating sight of his member and his abs, and I was utterly powerless to do anything but watch as the nightmare unfolded before me. Katsuki brought me closer to his throbbing member, and the proximity made my senses flare with intense clarity. The heat and musk were overpowering as he positioned me directly in front of his erect manhood. I could feel the anticipation in the air, every second stretching into an eternity. Slowly, he guided himself into my entrance, and I felt an overwhelming sensation as his tip reached my mouth. Inch by inch, he pushed deeper, and I could feel every contour and ridge of his length sliding inside me. 
The initial intrusion was slow, deliberate, and unbearably intense. My view was filled with the sight of his abs tensing and relaxing with each gentle thrust. Once he had fully seated himself within me, Katsuki began to move. The initial pace was slow, almost teasing. He withdrew almost completely before sliding back in each thrust more assured than the last. The sensation was a heady mix of discomfort and the bizarre new reality of my existence. His abs flexed rhythmically, each movement rippling through his powerful form. Gradually, his pace quickened. The slow, deliberate thrusts gave way to a more urgent rhythm. Katsuki's breathing grew heavier, and I could feel his heart pounding through the connection we shared. The room filled with the sounds of his exertion and the rhythmic slap of flesh against flesh. The faster he moved, the more intense the sensations became. I could taste the salty tang of his sweat, feel the heat emanating from his body, and the friction as he pumped in and out of me. My vision was locked onto his abs, watching the muscles contract and release with each powerful thrust. The world outside of this experience seemed to blur into insignificance. Time lost all meaning as Katsuki continued his relentless pace. Minutes felt like hours, and hours felt like days. The only constants were the rhythm of his movements and the overwhelming sensations that flooded my consciousness. Katsuki was completely lost in his own pleasure, oblivious to the torment I was enduring. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Katsuki's movements became erratic. He tensed, his abs and chest tightening as he braced himself. With a final, deep thrust, he buried himself inside me, and I felt an overwhelming rush as he let go. Huge spurts of hot, white goo erupted from him, filling the interior of my mouth with a sickening warmth. The sensation was both repulsive and inescapable, a humiliating testament to my helplessness. The thick liquid coated every inch of my insides, clinging to the walls of my new form. It was relentless, each spurt adding to the growing pool of his release. Some of it began to leak out of the corners of my mouth, seeping down and further emphasizing the degrading reality of my situation. Katsuki's breathing slowed as he finally withdrew from me, leaving me feeling empty and violated. The remnants of his release dripped from my mouth, a stark reminder of the ordeal I had just endured. He sighed contentedly, oblivious to the torment he had inflicted, and placed me back on the floor. My eyes met my reflection in the mirror, and I could see the evidence of his climax still leaking from my form. It was a grim reminder of the nightmare I was trapped in, and I could only hope for some form of salvation from this horrifying fate. His breathing slowed, and he withdrew from me, leaving me feeling empty and defiled. Katsuki sighed contentedly, placing me back on the floor. I rolled slightly, my eyes once again meeting my reflection in the mirror. The sight was a grim reminder of the nightmare I was trapped in, and I could only hope for some form of salvation from this horrifying fate. The sight was jarring, a standard flashlight, except for my eyes, staring back at me with a mix of horror and disbelief. It was surreal, watching my own expression shift in a way that a flashlight should never be capable of. The once familiar features of my face were now grotesquely out of place on this obscene object. I tried to blink, to move, to do anything to break free from this nightmare, but nothing worked. My reflection was a constant reminder of the absurdity and horror of my situation. I was trapped, helpless, in a world that made no sense. Hours passed, or maybe it was just minutes, time had lost all meaning. Katsuki's rhythmic breathing filled the room, a stark contrast to my own racing thoughts. I could only watch as the minutes dragged on, praying for some form of salvation. Any thoughts, comments, requests, couldn't have imagined how my day would unfold when I decided to visit Momo. The sky was a clear blue, a slight breeze making the trees sway gently as I walked to her dorm room. Yua had grown from a high school into a prestigious university, and we had grown alongside it, our powers and friendships maturing over time. Despite the gravity of our roles as future heroes, moments like these reminded me that we were still just young adults, navigating our lives in this extraordinary world. Momo's room was neat, as always, a reflection of her disciplined personality. Bookshelves lined one wall, filled with texts on various subjects. The bed was made with military precision, and her desk was organized, every item in its place. As I waited for her to return from an errand, my eyes wandered over her belongings. That's when I noticed a strange metallic ball on top of her dresser. It looked out of place, its smooth, shiny surface contrasting with the more practical items around it. Curiosity got the better of me. I reached out and picked it up, the cold metal feeling oddly heavy in my hand. Suddenly, the ball began to glow with a bright blue light, and the world around me twisted and churned. Panic surged through me as my body dissolved into a ball of light. I felt myself spinning wildly around the room, unable to control my movements. I crashed into a box on her dresser, and the world went dark. I struggled to understand what had happened, my mind reeling from the bizarre experience. Slowly, I regained consciousness, only to find myself unable to move. A loud banging sound filled my ears, and then, a bright line shined upon me as the box was open. As Momo's hand lifted me from the box, the world around me seemed to spin in slow motion. 
My vision adjusted to the sudden brightness, and I found myself staring at the ceiling. Her fingers wrapped around my new form. She placed me gently on the bed, propping me up so that I faced the large mirror across from her bed. For a moment, the sight before me was surreal. I could see myself, or what I had become, a sleek, silicone dildo, with my human eyes staring back at me in horror. The mirror reflected every detail, my once familiar green eyes now wide with fear embedded in the unnatural form. It was a grotesque, nightmarish parody of my previous self. Momo moved around the room, her back to me as she prepared for what was to come. She hummed softly, a tune that was both soothing and haunting in the context of my current predicament. I could see her reflection in the mirror as she undressed, her movements graceful and deliberate. Each piece of clothing she removed brought her one step closer to using me in a way I had never imagined. The room was filled with an unsettling silence, broken only by the rustle of fabric in Momo's gentle hum. My mind raced, desperate to find a way out of this nightmare. But no matter how hard I tried, my body refused to respond. I was trapped, a prisoner in this bizarre and horrifying form. Momo finished undressing and turned towards the bed, her eyes briefly meeting mine in the mirror. For a split second, I hoped she might notice something strange, that she might see the fear in my eyes. But she didn't. She approached the bed with a soft smile her fingers brushing over my new form. She picked me up again, her touch gentle yet firm. I could see every detail of her face as she examined me, her expression one of curiosity and anticipation. My vision blurred slightly as she moved, the room tilting and shifting around me. She climbed onto the bed, laying back against the pillows, her legs spreading slowly. The world seemed to narrow to a single point, the inevitability of what was about to happen bearing down on me like a crushing weight. As Momo's hand gripped my new form, I felt a surge of panic. Her touch was firm but gentle, and she seemed completely unaware of the terror in my eyes. She lay back on the bed, her legs spreading slowly, revealing the soft, glistening folds of her entrance. I wanted to scream, to shout, to make her stop, but I was trapped, a silent prisoner within this silicone body, my eyes fixed at the front, unable to look away from what was about to happen. With deliberate care, Momo brought me closer to her entrance. The heat radiating from her body was intense, the slickness of her arousal unmistakable. Her eyes were half-closed, her breathing steady but filled with anticipation. I was mere inches away now, the inevitable drawing nearer with each passing second. Then, with a gentle push, I was inside her. The sensation was overwhelming. Her inner walls enveloped me in a warm, wet embrace, pulsating gently. The initial movement was slow, almost tender, as if she was savoring the sensation. Each thrust was deliberate, her body adjusting to the intrusion. I could feel the pressure of her muscles contracting around me, the slick friction as she moved me in and out. My eyes, fixed at the front, could see her inner walls in vivid detail, each fold and curve a testament to my horrifying predicament. Despite the terror of my situation, I couldn't help but be acutely aware of every detail. The heat, the wetness, the rhythmic motion, it was all-consuming. I could feel her heartbeat through the walls of her body, a steady drumbeat that matched the slow, methodical rhythm of her movements. As the minutes passed, her pace began to pick up. The slow, deliberate thrusts became faster, more urgent. Her breathing grew heavier, her moans louder. I was being pumped in and out with increasing speed, the rhythm becoming more erratic. Each thrust sent a jolt through my new form, the pressure and friction intensify. I could barely keep up with the relentless pace. The sensations were overwhelming, my mind struggling to process the intense, repetitive motion. The world around me blurred as I was thrust deeper inside her, only to be pulled back out and pushed in again. I had no choice but to endure, to feel every second of this nightmare. Her movements became frenzied, the rhythm unpredictable. She shifted slightly, changing the angle, and I was pushed even deeper. The pressure was almost unbearable, her inner walls gripping me tightly with each thrust. Her moans filled the room, a testament to her mounting pleasure. I was nothing more than an object to her, a means to an end. The realization was a crushing weight, adding to the physical torment of my situation. The rhythm of her movements became a chaotic dance, each thrust a reminder of my helplessness. Momo's moans grew louder, her body trembling as she approached the peak of her pleasure. The thrusts became shorter, more erratic, her breathing ragged. I was caught in the relentless rhythm, unable to do anything but endure. Finally, with a shuddering cry, Momo climaxed. Her body tightened around me, the intensity of her pleasure sending shockwaves through my being. She held me there for a moment, her muscles contracting rhythmically before slowly pulling me out. I lay there on the bed, still trapped in my silicone prison, as Momo relaxed, her breathing gradually returning to normal. The horror of my situation settled over me like a suffocating blanket, the realization that I had no control, no escape. As she drifted off to sleep, I was left alone with my thoughts, wondering if I would ever find a way back to my normal life or if I was doomed to remain a silent, helpless toy in her most private moments. Had a rare day off from Ua University, and I decided to surprise my mom with a visit.
The sun was shining brightly, and the warm spring breeze made the walk to her apartment rather pleasant. As I approached the familiar building, nostalgia washed over me. This place held so many memories, both happy and challenging, but it was home. I arrived at my mom's apartment, the familiar sight bringing a smile to my face. I hadn't seen her in a while, and I was looking forward to surprising her, pulling out my key. I unlocked the door and stepped inside, expecting to be greeted by her warm smile and the comforting aroma of her cooking. Mom, I called out, but the apartment was eerily silent. I closed the door behind me and took off my shoes, glancing around. Everything seemed in place, the cozy living room, her knitting project on the couch, and the faint smell of her favorite lavender air freshener. But something fell off. As I wandered through the apartment, my footsteps muffled by the carpet, I noticed a faint, unusual glow emanating from down the hallway. It was coming from her bedroom, the door slightly ajar. My heart skipped a beat as curiosity and concern urged me forward. I approached the door cautiously, the glow growing brighter with each step. The light was soft yet otherworldly, casting strange shadows on the hallway walls. I pushed the door open a bit more and peered inside. The glow was coming from a small metallic ball on her nightstand, next to a half-filled bowl of condoms. I blinked, taken aback by the odd combination. The metallic ball seemed out of place. Almost otherworldly. Intrigued, I reached out to pick it up. The moment my fingers touched the cool surface, a brilliant light engulfed me. I felt a sudden nausea, my stomach churning as my body lifted off the ground. Panic set in as my vision blurred, the world spinning wildly around me. I tried to scream, but no sound escaped my lips. Time seemed to stretch into eternity as my body twisted and turned in the light. I could feel myself shrinking, my limbs and features contorting into an unrecognizable form. The sensation was both painful and surreal, as if I were being molded like clay. When the light finally dimmed, I found myself suspended in mid-air, feeling profoundly different, smaller, helpless. A few seconds later, I began to fall, descending towards the bowl on the nightstand. I landed with a soft thud among the condoms, the realization of my predicament slowly dawning on me. Panic set in as I tried to make sense of my situation. I couldn't feel my body, couldn't turn my head. The only thing I could do was stare up at the ceiling with my one eye. Time seemed to stretch endlessly as I lay there, immobile and helpless. I waited for what felt like an eternity, my mind racing with questions and fears. What had that ball done to me? Why couldn't I move? As minutes turned into hours, despair started to creep in. Would I be stuck like this forever? The sound of the front door opening shattered the silence. My heart, if I even still had one, leapt at the noise. Footsteps echoed through the house, accompanied by the familiar giggle of my mother and a deeper, more resonant laugh. All might. The footsteps grew louder, drawing closer to the bedroom. The door to my mother's room opened with a soft creak, and I could hear an all might walk in. They were holding hands, laughing about something that had happened during their outing. Mom noticed the metallic ball on the floor almost immediately. She walked over and picked it up, a smirk playing on her lips. Turning to face all might, she laughed softly. It looks like an intruder broke into my room while we were out, she said, her tone light and amused. All might looked puzzled, his brows knitting together in confusion. What do you mean, and co? Her smirk widened as she explained. This ball has a special power. Anyone who touches it other than me gets transformed into a condom for me to use. The best part, once transformed, everyone who knew them forgets they ever existed. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. The shock and horror of my situation deepened as I realized the implications. My own mother had forgotten I ever existed. As I lay there, helpless and unable to communicate, despair washed over me. The person I had looked up to the most, who had been my biggest supporter, no longer remembered me. All Might's confusion gave way to understanding, then to shock. That's quite a power, he said slowly, his gaze shifting to the bowl on the nightstand where I lay. Trapped in my new form, all I could do was listen. The familiar creak of the bed signaled that Mom and All Might had sat down. My vantage point allowed me only a view of the ceiling and the occasional glimpse of movement from the corner of my vision. Their soft, intimate murmurs reached my ears, growing louder and more passionate. The sound of their lips meeting and the gentle rustle of clothing made my stomach churn, a mix of discomfort and the cold, hard reality of my situation. I couldn't see them, but the escalating intensity of their makeout session was painfully clear. Oh might. Mom's voice was breathless, her tone filled with affection. Tasha Nori. She moaned, using his real name, which she only did in the privacy of their moments together. The intimacy of hearing my mother speak like that sent a shiver through me adding to the surreal horror of my predicament. Minutes passed, each one feeling like an eternity. Their moans grew louder, more frequent, filling the room with a palpable tension. I tried to block out the sounds, but there was no escape. I was forced to listen to every whisper, every sigh. Suddenly, a shadow loomed over the bowl I was in, casting me into darkness. My pulse quickened as I realized it was mom's hand, reaching in. 
Her fingers hovered for a moment before descending, selecting me from among the other condoms. I could only stare in shock as her hand turned downward, fingers closing around me with a grip that felt both foreign and invasive. She picked me up with ease, lifting me out of the bowl. The world around me blurred, colors and shapes smearing together as I was moved. When my vision steadied, I found myself eye-level with all might. His expression was one of eager anticipation, unaware of the true nature of the object in mom's hand. Time to wrap up, mom said with a light giggle, her tone playful and teasing. I wanted to scream, to beg them to stop, but no sound would come. All I could do was hang there, helpless and horrified, as the reality of my transformation became even more unbearable. My mind raced, desperately searching for a way out, but the more I struggled, the more trapped I felt. This nightmare was far from over, and I could only hope that somehow, someway, I would find a way to reverse this terrible fate and reclaim my life. Until then, I had no choice but to endure the unimaginable, clinging to the hope that I would be saved from this living hell. I could do nothing as mom's fingers deftly tore open the wrapper that surrounded me. The crinkling of the plastic and the sensation of being freed from the packaging sent a fresh wave of horror through me. She discarded the wrapper with a casual flick, her focus entirely on the task at hand. As I was peeled onto All Might's member, the reality of my situation hit me with brutal clarity. I could feel every bump, every vein that throbbed on his massive appendage. The warmth radiating from his skin was almost unbearable, a constant reminder of my humiliating transformation. I stretched as much as I could, trying desperately to cover him, but it was painfully clear that I was too small. Each pulse, each throb sent waves of sensation through my form. The intimate details of his anatomy were impossible to ignore, searing themselves into my consciousness. I wanted to escape, to find some way out of this nightmare, but I was utterly trapped, forced to endure the unbearable from my vantage point at the tip of All Might's member. I watched in horror as he stood up and faced Mom. Her legs spread wide in eager readiness. The sight of her moist entrance looming closer made me want to scream, but no sound would come. Before I could fully comprehend the situation, all Might thrust forward, and I was plunged into Mom's folds with brutal speed. The heat, the pressure, and the overwhelming sensation of being inside her were indescribable. All Might started with slow, deliberate movements, but as Mom's demands grew more insistent, he picked up the pace. Each thrust sent me deeper into a personal hell. I was stretched and compressed with every movement, my entire being consumed by the rhythm of their lovemaking. The world around me became a blur of motion and sensation each thrust a reminder of my helplessness. Every thrust sent me deeper, the rhythmic motion becoming a torturous dance of compression and release. I could feel every subtle shift, every contraction, as her body responded to All Might's powerful movements. The sounds of their pleasure, their moans, their gasps, were a cruel soundtrack to my personal hell. All Might's pace quickened, and the force of each thrust grew more intense. My entire being was stretched and squeezed with every motion. My existence reduced to a series of brutal impacts. The friction was unbearable, a constant reminder of my helplessness. Time seemed to blur, each second stretching into an eternity of torment. The physical sensations were overpowering, but it was the psychological weight that was the hardest to bear. I was trapped in a nightmare, forced to endure an intimacy that was both grotesque and deeply personal. Time lost all meaning as the thrusts continued. Minutes felt like hours, and the relentless pace showed no signs of stopping. Mom's moans and All Might's grunts filled the room, creating a twisted symphony of pleasure and pain. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, I felt All Might's member come to a halt. I braced myself, knowing what was coming next. The pressure built up, and I felt the explosion of white goo fill me. The force of it was overwhelming, stretching me even further as I tried desperately to contain it. I felt like a balloon being filled to the point of bursting. When All Might finally withdrew from Mom, the sensation was accompanied by a sickening plop. I was left filled and stretched to my limits, my mind reeling from the horror of it all. As they lay together, sated in content, I remained trapped in my nightmarish form, my spirit battered and broken. After they finished, Inko and All Might lay next to each other, basking in the afterglow of their passionate encounter. Their breathing was heavy but content, the room filled with a comfortable silence. I hung off All Might's now softer member, stretched and used, feeling utterly defeated. Minutes passed, and the room's warmth settled around them like a comforting blanket. Inko's laughter filled the space as they shared quiet moments of intimacy. But my reality was far from theirs. I was a prisoner, my senses overwhelmed by the tactile reality of All Might's skin, each pulse of his heartbeat a cruel reminder of my predicament. Suddenly, Inko casually looked over at the used condom. Her giant face loomed into my vision, her features magnified and distorted. Her eyes, usually so kind and gentle, were now cold and unfeeling. She peeled me off All Might's member with a practiced ease, her touch impersonal and indifferent. As she held me in front of her face, I could see every detail, the slight furrow of her brow, the faint lines around her eyes, and the way her lips curled into a satisfied smile. But it was her eyes that captured my attention. There was no recognition, 
No spark of memory. Just a cold, detached gaze. Whoever you were, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. I hope it was worth losing your identity trying to rob me. The word struck deep, a cruel twist of the knife that was already embedded in my heart. She had no idea who I was, no inkling that her own son was the one she held in her hand. The depth of my despair seemed to know no bounds as I realized just how complete my erasure was. With a casual flick, she tossed me into the air. The world spun around me, a dizzying blur of colors and shapes. I landed with a soft thud in a garbage can. The sight that greeted me was a new level of horror, a pile of other used and broken condoms, discarded without a second thought. The stench was overwhelming, a mix of latex and bodily fluids. The sheer indignity of my new surroundings was almost too much to bear. I lay there, among the discarded refuse, feeling more alone and forgotten than ever before. As Inko and All Might continued to lie together, talking softly and sharing their post-coital bliss, I was left to contemplate my fate. The enormity of my situation weighed heavily on me, but somewhere deep inside, a spark of determination remained. This was not the end. I would find a way to reverse this transformation, to make my mother remember me and reclaim my life. For now, all I could do was endure, clinging to that tiny ember of hope. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but I was Izuku Midoriya. I had faced impossible odds before, and I would do so again. I leaned back on the comfortable couch in the common area of the dorm, feeling the gentle hum of conversations and laughter around me. The setting sun cast a warm glow through the large windows, casting elongated shadows and painting the room in hues of gold and orange. It was moments like these that made you a university feel like home. As I was flipping through a textbook, trying to make sense of the latest lecture on hero ethics, I felt a presence beside me. I looked up to see Toru Hagakure, her faint outline shimmering in the evening light. Even though she was invisible, I could always sense her bright and lively energy. Hey, Midoriya, she greeted, her voice cheerful and light-hearted. What are you up to? Just catching up on some reading, I replied, closing the book. How about you? She giggled, the sound like a gentle bell. Oh, you know, just hanging out. Mind if I join you? Not at all, I said, smiling. It's always nice to have company. We chatted casually, our conversation flowing effortlessly. Toru had a way of making even the most mundane topics seem fascinating. She began to flirt a little, her tone playful and teasing. I could feel my cheeks warming, but her charm was infectious, and I found myself laughing more than usual. After a few minutes, the door to the common area opened, and Nito Monoma walked in. His usual confident stride seemed even more pronounced this evening. Toru glanced at him and gave him a weird hand sign with her glove. I found it odd but didn't think much of it. I turned to wave at Nito, who returned the gesture with a smirk before continuing on his way. So, Midoriya, Toru continued, her voice drawing my attention back to her. Have you ever thought about what you'd do if you had a different quirk? Before I could answer, I felt a firm hand on my shoulder. The touch was unexpected, and I turned my head, only to see Nito standing right behind me, his grin widening. The moment Nito's hand touched my shoulder, an intense, unfamiliar sensation shot through my body. It started as a faint tingling, like pins and needles spreading from the point of contact and quickly escalating into a full body shiver. I tried to pull away, to shake off his grip, but my muscles wouldn't respond. My vision blurred, and a strange, ethereal glow enveloped me. As the transformation began, I felt my body twisting and contorting in ways that defied logic. My bones seemed to liquefy, my skin stretching and shifting. It was as if I were being pulled apart and reassembled at the same time. The sensation was both painful and numbing, a paradox that left me disoriented and helpless. My perspective warped, and I felt myself flattening, my limbs merging into a single, seamless form. I could no longer feel my arms or legs, no longer sense the ground beneath my feet. My head spun, the room around me dissolving into a kaleidoscope of colors and shapes. The glow intensified, wrapping around me like a cocoon, squeezing tighter and tighter until I thought I might implode. Then, just as suddenly as it began, the transformation stopped. The world came back into focus, but everything was different. My vision was fixed, locked in place, and I could no longer move or speak. Panic surged through me as I realized I couldn't even blink. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. The first thing I noticed was Toru's voice, now booming as if amplified. Thanks, Nito. Here's the money I promised you. Pleasure doing business with you. What had just happened? I tried to piece it together, but my thoughts were a jumbled mess. I felt myself being lifted, the motion smooth and unsettling. Toru's giggle echoed in my ears, and I wanted to cry out, to ask what she had done to me. Hi, Midoriya. A little confused. That's okay, I'll show you, she said, her tone almost mocking. I felt myself being turned, and my vision suddenly filled with the image of a mirror. What I saw made my heart pound in my chest, or at least, it would have if I still had a heart. Toru held a green-colored bra, and after a moment of sheer disbelief, I realized the horrifying truth. I was the bra, 
If I could have widened my eyes, I would have. Instead, I was trapped, my vision fixed on the reflection of Toru's invisible form holding me up. The bra's cups were now my eyes, and the straps and fabric my new body. I was a piece of clothing, an object. Toru's giggle brought me back to the present. Nito found a quirk that lets him transform people into objects or clothing. Pretty neat, huh, Izuku? I couldn't reply, couldn't even move, but she took my silence as agreement. The reality of my transformation was setting in, a cold, hard fact that left me reeling. As Toru carried me to her room, my vision bounced with her steps, each movement a reminder of my new, helpless state. She placed me on her bed, the soft fabric beneath me doing little to comfort my spiraling thoughts. As she began to undress, the sight of her invisible form removing her school blazer and bra was surreal. The floating skirt was almost comical, but there was no humor in my situation. I'm going to wear you now, she said matter-of-factly, her tone almost cheerful. You're a push-up bra, by the way, Toru said, her tone conversational as she picked me up. I wanted to make my chest look bigger. The moment Toru secured me around her chest, the sensation was unlike anything I had ever experienced. Her skin was warm against my fabric. Every curve and contour of her breasts pressing intimately against me. I could feel the subtle rise and fall of her breathing. The rhythmic expansion and contraction of her ribcage transmitting through my entire being. Each breath she took was a reminder of my new, inescapable reality. As she adjusted me to fit more snugly, I felt the full weight of her breasts settling into place. The pressure was significant, a constant, unyielding force that bore down on me from all angles. It wasn't just a sensation of weight, it was the way that weight shifted and moved with every minor motion she made. When she leaned forward slightly to grab her shirt, the pressure intensified, and I could feel the shift of her breasts against me, a rolling, pressing sensation that was both overwhelming and deeply invasive. Every step she took made the weight sway slightly, creating a continuous, gentle rocking motion that kept me acutely aware of her presence. The firmness of her breasts, the way they filled out my form, was a constant, tactile reminder of my predicament. I could feel the slight bounce as she moved, the dynamic interplay of gravity and motion transferring through her body and into me. The fabric of her shirt sliding over me added another layer of compression, pressing me even tighter against her skin. The combined weight of her breasts and the added pressure of her clothing created an almost suffocating sensation. I was acutely aware of the strain it put on my form, the relentless pressure that made every moment a test of endurance. As she stood in front of the mirror, making those final adjustments, the sensation of her fingers smoothing out the fabric, tugging and pulling to ensure the perfect fit, was maddening. Each touch was a reminder of my lack of control, my new role as a mere object in her wardrobe. The way she manipulated me to enhance her appearance, to push up and shape her breasts, felt both degrading and oddly intimate. As Toru made her way to class, each step sent a tremor through my new form. The weight of her breasts bore down on me, amplified by the snugness of her shirt. My fabric strained under the pressure, and I could feel every shift and sway as she walked. It was a continuous, relentless effort to keep her chest in place, an exercise in endurance that seemed to stretch time itself. With every step, I felt the bounce and sway of her breasts, the movement creating a constant, jarring pressure that rippled through me. The sensation was overwhelming, a persistent reminder of my transformation. The rhythmic motion was almost hypnotic, a ceaseless up and down that left me disoriented and exhausted. When she finally sat down in class, the relief was short-lived. The sudden change in pressure as her weight shifted caused me to bounce slightly, the sensation both disconcerting and uncomfortable. Her movements, though subtle, were magnified through my fabric, and I felt each adjustment, each shift, with acute clarity. To make matters worse, the day was hot, and Toru's body began to sweat. The moisture seeped into my fabric, creating a damp, sticky sensation that only added to my discomfort. The heat intensified the pressure, making it harder to maintain my shape and support her properly. As I struggled with the combined weight and heat, Mina Ashido leaned over to Toru, her eyes twinkling with curiosity. Hey, Toru, she whispered, her tone playful. Your breasts look bigger today. Is that a special bra from Nito? Before I could process her words, Mina reached over and gave Toru's breasts a playful squeeze. The pressure was intense, a sudden, sharp squeeze that sent shockwaves through my entire being. The sensation was nothing short of hellish, a jarring mix of pain and discomfort that left me reeling. Yeah, it is, Toru replied, her voice casual despite the situation. Pretty cool, huh? Mina giggled, her fingers still pressing into the fabric, unknowingly tormenting me. Very cool. It's really effective. I had to endure it. Had to reform and maintain my structure despite the relentless pressure and heat. Each moment felt like an eternity. The constant strain testing my limits in ways I had never imagined. As Mina finally released her grip, the pressure eased, but the residual ache remained. Toru shifted slightly, adjusting her posture, and I felt the familiar weight settle back into place. The sweat continued to soak into my fabric, a constant reminder of the hot, oppressive day. 
Through it all, I could do nothing but endure, hoping for an end to this relentless ordeal. The classroom buzzed with activity, but for me, each second was a test of endurance, a struggle to maintain my form and support Toru's breasts amidst the heat and pressure. It was a living nightmare, one I could only hope to survive until I found a way to return to my true self. The day stretched endlessly, every second an exhausting ordeal. The relentless heat only intensified, and Toru's sweat soaked into my fabric, creating a persistent, damp sensation that clung to me like a second skin. The sharp pain from supporting her breasts dulled into a constant, crushing pressure that numbed my senses. As the hours wore on, I found it easier to let go of my attachment to my former life. When I stopped thinking about who I was, who I used to be, the pain seemed to recede slightly. A strange clarity emerged. A warped sense of peace, just carry the breasts, don't think about anything else. It was a mantra that brought a twisted sort of relief. The evening brought a change in setting but not in my strange new reality. Mina's room was a familiar yet alien environment as Toru and Mina began an intimate encounter. They kissed passionately, and between breaths, Mina whispered, It's so hot that you tricked someone into getting changed. As Mina's hands roamed over Toru's body, the sensation was overwhelming. Her fingers traced the contours of Toru's breasts, and I could feel every subtle movement through my fabric. Each touch sent a ripple of sensation through me, the pressure shifting and changing as Mina explored. When Mina's fingers first brushed against me, it was a gentle, almost teasing touch. The warmth of her hands seeped through my fabric, creating a strange, almost electric sensation. She cupped Toru's breasts, and I felt the weight shift, the pressure intensifying as she squeezed. It was both painful and oddly pleasurable, a mix of sensations that left me reeling. Mina's touch grew bolder, more insistent. She needed Toru's breasts, her fingers pressing deeply into the flesh. The pressure was intense, each squeeze sending shockwaves through me. The sensation of her fingers digging into Toru's skin. The subtle movements as she adjusted her grip was maddening. It was as if I could feel every ridge of her fingerprints, every slight shift in pressure. The heat of Mina's hands was almost unbearable. It mingled with the residual warmth from Toru's body, creating a stifling, humid environment. I could feel the sweat soaking into me, a constant reminder of the day's oppressive heat. Each touch, each squeeze, seemed to amplify the sensation making it harder to maintain my focus. As Mina continued to play with Toru's breasts, I felt a stirring of arousal that conflicted sharply with my circumstances. The sensation was both intoxicating and disturbing. The pleasure was undeniable, a deep, throbbing ache that pulsed through me with each of Mina's movements. It was a bizarre, surreal experience, feeling pleasure from someone else's touch, from the manipulation of someone else's body. When Mina covered my eyes with her hands, the darkness was almost a relief. The pressure of her palms against me, the sensation of being squeezed and manipulated, was overwhelming. I could feel Toru's heartbeat through her chest, a steady, rhythmic thumping that resonated through me. It was a constant reminder of my new existence, of the intimate connection I now shared with her body. The more Mina played with Toru's breasts, the more I felt myself losing control. The pleasure was building, an insistent, throbbing need that I couldn't ignore. Each squeeze, each need, sent waves of sensation through me, making it harder to think, harder to remember who I was. The mantra echoed in my mind, a desperate attempt to maintain some semblance of control, don't think, just carry the breasts. But as Mina's hands continued their relentless exploration, I found it increasingly difficult to hold on to that thought. The pleasure was too intense, too all-consuming. It was a deep, primal sensation, a need that went beyond anything I had ever experienced. I could feel my resolve weakening my sense of self slipping away with each touch. The atmosphere in Mina's room grew increasingly charged, the air thick with anticipation. As Toru and Mina's kisses deepened, I braced myself for whatever came next. The sensation of Mina's hands playing over Toru's breasts was already overwhelming, each touch sending shockwaves through my fabric. Suddenly, Mina pulled back and gave Toru a playful grin. I've got an idea, she said, her voice husky with excitement. Before I could process what she meant, Mina positioned herself in front of Toru, her face level with Toru's chest. The next moment, Mina buried her face between Toru's breasts, her movements vigorous and uninhibited. The sensation was unlike anything I had experienced before. Mina's cheeks and lips pressed against me, the vibrations from her playful noises reverberating through my entire form. Each nudge, each shift of her face against Toru's skin, created a symphony of pressure and sensation that I could barely comprehend. Mina's hands reached up, cupping Toru's breasts and squeezing them together, amplifying the intensity of the motorboating. The pressure was immense, a constant, shifting force that pressed and molded me against Toru's chest. My fabric stretched and contracted with each movement, creating a tactile feedback loop that was both painful and oddly pleasurable. The heat of Mina's breath seeped through me, mingling with the residual warmth of Toru's body. The combined sensations were suffocating, a relentless barrage of touch and pressure that left me reeling. 
Mina's enthusiastic motions created a rhythm that I was forced to endure. Each moment a new assault on my already overloaded senses. Mina's playful giggles and Toru's soft moans filled the room, creating a cacophony of sound that matched the intensity of the physical sensation. I felt myself being squeezed and released in quick succession, the pressure ebbing and flowing in a way that left me breathless. The experience was disorienting, each new wave of sensation blurring the lines between pleasure and pain. As Mina continued, I found it increasingly difficult to hold on to my sense of self. The mantra that had been my anchor began to fade, replaced by a raw, primal response to the overwhelming stimuli. Don't think, just carry the breasts. The words echoed faintly in my mind, but their power was diminishing in the face of the relentless onslaught. The pleasure built to a crescendo, each new touch pushing me closer to the edge. The sensations were too intense, too all-consuming. Mina's vigorous motorboating had turned my world into a chaotic blur of touch and sound, each moment a new test of my endurance. When Mina finally pulled away, the sudden absence of pressure was almost shocking. The relief was short-lived, the residual sensations still lingering in my fabric. I was left in a daze, my mind struggling to process the intense experience I had just endured. As Mina and Toru resumed their more tender embraces, I clung to the remnants of my mantra. Don't think, just carry the breasts. The words were a lifeline, a way to ground myself in the midst of the chaos. And for now, that was all I could do. When Mina finally unclipped me, the sudden release was almost painful. The pressure eased, but the residual ache remained. As she tossed me aside, I landed on the floor, my vision fixed on the bed where Mina straddled the invisible form of my owner. The sight was strangely intimate, and for a moment, I felt a pang of something akin to jealousy. From my position on the floor, my vision fixed on the bed, I watched as Mina lowered one of her hands to Toru's skirt. The anticipation was palpable. Every moment stretched out as I tried to comprehend the scene unfolding before me. Mina's hand disappeared beneath the fabric and a sharp intake of breath from Toru told me everything I needed to know. Mina's fingers found their mark, entering Toru with a slow, deliberate motion. Toru's gasp was immediate, her body reacting to the intimate intrusion. Mina began to move her hand rhythmically, each motion causing Toru to gasp and moan with increasing intensity. The sound of her pleasure filled the room, a stark contrast to the soft hum of the night outside. I tried to focus, tried to hold on to my fading sense of self. Don't think, just carry the breasts. But the mantra was slipping, the words losing their meaning. Why would I have a human name? Izuku. That name felt foreign, out of place. It was silly to think I was ever anything but a bra. I watched as the pink-skinned girl pumped her fingers in my owner, Toru's invisible form writhing in response. Each thrust, each flick of Mina's wrist, drew more moans from Toru, her body reacting with an almost primal intensity. The scene was mesmerizing, and I found myself unable to look away. My thoughts began to fracture, the reality of my situation settling in. I can't believe my friends would do this too. What friends? I am a bra. Bras aren't friends with humans. The thought echoed in my mind, a stark reminder of my new existence. The sight of Mina making my owner happy filled me with a strange sense of satisfaction. Oh look, that pink-skinned girl is making my owner happy. That's great. The pleasure in Toru's voice, the way her moans sounded, was a testament to the bond they shared. And I was a part of that, even if in a different way. As Mina's movements grew more fervent, Toru's moans reached a crescendo. The rhythm of their interaction was a dance of pleasure, each motion, each gasp a reminder of the intimacy they shared. Mina's fingers moved with skill and confidence, drawing out Toru's pleasure with each thrust and caress. I felt a strange mix of emotions watching them, my sense of self continuing to dissolve. I received a message from Katsuki, his usual abrasive tone evident even in text. Get to my dorm room, nerd. Now, I frowned at my phone, puzzled. Katsuki and I had a complicated history, rivals, old friends, frenemies, but a direct invitation to his room was unusual. My curiosity piqued. I decided to humor him. Maybe he had something important to discuss, or perhaps this was another one of his strange ways to test me. As I walked through the hallways of the dorm, I tried to push aside the nagging sense of unease. Katsuki had mellowed out a bit since we started our training at Ua High, but he still had his unpredictable moments. Whatever he wanted, I would face it head on. When I arrived at his door, I noticed it was slightly ajar. That was strange. Katsuki wasn't one to leave his door open. Hesitating for a moment, I pushed the door open wider and stepped inside. The room was dimly lit, shadows stretching across the floor and walls. Back you go. I called out, my voice echoing slightly in the quiet room. There was no immediate response, just the faint hum of an appliance somewhere in the background. As I took another step forward, the door suddenly slammed shut behind me with a loud thud, making me jump. I spun around to see what had caused it, but there was nothing there. My heart pounded in my chest, a mix of confusion and alarm flooding my senses. What's going on? I muttered under my breath, turning back towards the room. Before I could take another step, 
A tiny metallic ball rolled into view, stopping right by my foot. I stared at it, bewildered, and then looked up to see Katsuki standing across the room, a smirk plastered on his face. Katsuki, what is this? I demanded, my voice laced with irritation. But he didn't answer. Instead, he raised an eyebrow and chuckled softly. Welcome, Deku, he said, his voice low and menacing. Before I could react, the metallic ball at my feet emitted a blindingly bright light, engulfing the entire room. I instinctively raised my arms to shield my eyes. But the light was too intense, piercing through my closed eyelids. My world dissolved into a swirling vortex of colors and shapes. I felt an intense pressure all around me, as if my entire body was being compressed and stretched at the same time. The pain was excruciating, a searing sensation that coursed through every fiber of my being. I tried to scream, but no sound escaped my lips. My limbs felt heavy, unresponsive, as if they were melting and reforming in ways that defied logic. Through the chaos, I could vaguely hear Katsuki's laughter, a sinister sound that reverberated through my mind. My thoughts grew hazy, disjointed, as the transformation continued. I was losing myself, my sense of identity slipping away with every passing second. His world blurred as he felt his body twist and turn into another shape. I woke up to a distant, rhythmic thumping that grew louder with each passing second. My surroundings were unfamiliar, a vast, dimly lit expanse that seemed to stretch on forever. Confusion and fear gripped me as I tried to make sense of where I was, but my body felt strange, unresponsive. The thumping grew louder, more distinct, each impact sending a slight tremor through the ground beneath me. Then, suddenly, a colossal shadow loomed overhead, blocking out the faint light. I strained to see, my vision limited and fixed, unable to move or even blink. My heart pounded in my chest as the shadow took form, revealing itself to be a giant version of Katsuki. He was immense, towering over me like a titan. His eyes gleamed with a malicious glint as he knelt down, his massive face filling my entire field of vision. I felt a mix of awe and terror at his sheer scale. Every detail of his features magnified to a daunting degree. Katsuki's smirk widened as he extended a hand toward me, his fingers closing in with deliberate slowness. Well, well, look who's awake, he boomed, his voice resonating like a thunderclap. The vibrations of his laughter shook me to my core as his hand wrapped around me with an unyielding grip. I felt my world twist and turn as Katsuki lifted me, the motion dizzying and disorienting. His laughter grew louder, more menacing, echoing in my ears as he brought me closer to his face. You're nothing now, Deku, he sneered, his breath washing over me like a gale. Just a tiny, pathetic thing. I wanted to scream, to plead for mercy, but I was helpless, unable to move or speak. Katsuki's fingers tightened around me, the pressure almost unbearable, before he began to lower me toward a gaping maw, his backpack. The darkness inside was suffocating, a black void that seemed to swallow all light. Katsuki shoved me into the backpack with a rough jolt, my world plunging into chaos once more. I tumbled into the cramped, musty space, my surroundings a jumble of indistinct shapes and textures. The sounds of Katsuki's laughter faded, replaced by the muffled rustling of the backpack. I felt a rough fabric pressing against me from all sides, the confined space amplifying my sense of claustrophobia. I tried to adjust, to find some semblance of balance, but the jostling and shifting made it impossible. Fear and despair clawed at me as I lay there, trapped in the darkness. The reality of my situation pressed down on me with relentless force. Katsuki had reduced me to this, a mere object at his mercy, a toy for his amusement. Time lost all meaning in the stifling confines of the backpack. The only sounds were my own shallow breaths and the occasional distant thud from outside. I had no idea where Katsuki was taking me or what he planned to do next. The uncertainty gnawed at me, a constant reminder of my helplessness. I tried to hold on to hope, to believe that someone would find me, that I could escape this nightmare. But with every passing moment, that hope grew fainter, overshadowed by the grim reality of my situation. As the backpack jostled and swayed with Katsuki's movements, I could only brace myself for whatever came next. Trapped in this dark, suffocating prison, I knew that my ordeal was far from over. And as Katsuki's distant laughter echoed in my mind, I realized just how alone and powerless I truly was. The bag jostled and turned relentlessly, making it impossible for me to keep track of time. My world was a constant blur of motion and muffled sounds, my new form powerless to do anything but endure the ride. Hours seemed to pass, the relentless movement turning my stomach with every sway and bump. Suddenly, the bag came to an abrupt stop. I heard a knock, followed by the familiar sound of a door opening. Katsuki's voice, now booming and distorted, exchanged words with a female voice that sent a jolt of recognition through me. It was Melissa. Come in, she said, her voice warm and inviting despite its muffled quality. I was jostled around a bit more before the bag was unceremoniously dropped. My world tilted and spun as I tumbled to the bottom, settling against the fabric with a final, disorienting thud. The sounds of Katsuki and Melissa's voices filled the air, their flirtatious banter punctuated by laughter and playful teasing. 
Though severely muffled, I could make out fragments of their conversation. First time, I heard her say. Her voice tinged with a mix of excitement and nervousness. Protection. There was a rustling sound, followed by the unmistakable sensation of the bag's zipper being pulled open. Light flooded in, blinding me momentarily as Katsuki's giant hand reached in and grabbed me. His grip was firm, the pressure intense as he lifted me out of the bag. My world shifted once again as I was brought face to face with the giant form of Melissa. It took a moment to reorient myself, but when I finally managed to see through the transparent wrapper covering me, my heart sank. Melissa, my girlfriend, stood before me, her face flushed with a mixture of anticipation and embarrassment. Melissa's giant fingers tore at the wrapper, the plastic crinkling loudly in my ears. The sensation of the wrapper being ripped away was like having a layer of skin peeled off, exposing me completely to the world. I was now in her grasp, her touch gentle yet firm as she moved me closer to Katsuki. Panic surged through me as I realized what was happening. I was being used as a condom. The humiliation and fear were overwhelming but I was helpless, unable to protest or resist. Melissa's warm breath washed over me as she positioned me in front of Katsuki's erection, her face a mask of concentration and nervous excitement. She brought me closer, her movements deliberate and careful. Katsuki's massive form loomed above me, his eyes gleaming with anticipation. My mind raced, searching for a way out, but there was none. I was trapped in this nightmare, powerless to stop what was coming next. Melissa's lips parted, and she used her mouth to peel me onto Katsuki's member. The sensation was surreal, her warm breath and the soft texture of her lips contrasting sharply with the cold reality of my situation. I felt myself stretch and conform to his shape, every inch of my new form pressing tightly against him. As the process continued, I could feel the pressure mounting, the air growing thick with tension and anticipation. Melissa's face was a blur of concentration and desire, her actions deliberate and precise. Katsuki's smug satisfaction radiated from him, his towering presence a constant reminder of my helplessness. Finally, I was fully unrolled onto Katsuki, my form now a seamless barrier between him and Melissa. The realization of my fate settled in, a heavy weight that pressed down on me with crushing force. I was nothing more than a tool, an object to be used and discarded. It felt like my face was stretched taut over the tip of Katsuki's member. My entire body elongated to cover the rest of his length. Every contour and vein pressed against me, the sensation both alien and excruciatingly intimate. Despite the horror of my predicament, the charged atmosphere in the room was impossible to ignore. Melissa, her hands deft and confident, placed Katsuki's member between her ample breasts. The warmth and softness enveloped me, each movement sending ripples of sensation through my form. She swirled her breasts around Katsuki's member, keeping it snugly in place, her eyes locked onto his with a mix of shyness and desire. I could see everything from my position, trapped and yet unable to look away. Melissa's cheeks were flushed, a pink hue spreading across her fair skin as she lowered her head. Her eyes sparkled with mischief and excitement as she brought her tongue out, flicking it playfully against the tip. The sensation was electrifying. Melissa's tongue, wet and warm, glided over my stretched face. Each lick was a mix of pleasure and humiliation. My senses overwhelmed by the duality of the experience. Her breasts pressed and swirled around me, the softness creating a maddening friction that was impossible to ignore. Despite my desperate desire to hate every moment of this, I couldn't help but feel a rising excitement. Melissa's touch was gentle yet firm, her actions deliberate and filled with an eagerness that was contagious. Her giant tongue continued its ministrations, each pass sending a shiver through my form. The warmth of her breath, the softness of her breasts, and the wet, teasing strokes of her tongue all combined to create a heady mix of sensation. For what felt like an eternity, Melissa continued, her movements growing bolder and more urgent. The room was filled with the sounds of her soft moans and Katsuki's grunts of pleasure. Every fiber of my being was attuned to their actions, my own sense of self slipping away in the tide of their passion. Eventually, Melissa could no longer contain herself. She leaned back, her body arching gracefully as she lay down on the bed. Her eyes were filled with a hunger that matched Katsuki's, her voice a breathless whisper. Hurry up and take me, Katsuki. It's not like my frigid boyfriend is going to do it anytime soon. Her words cut through me like a knife, the sting of betrayal and despair mingling with the twisted arousal I couldn't suppress. Katsuki wasted no time, positioning himself between Melissa's legs. I felt my world shift once more, the sensation of his movements transmitting through my entire being. As he lined himself up with Melissa's entrance, I found myself face to face with her most intimate area. The heat radiated from her, a tangible pulse that seemed to sink with my own frantic heartbeat. The reality of what was about to happen hit me with full force, a mix of dread and reluctant anticipation. Melissa's body trembled with anticipation, her breaths coming in short, excited gasps. Katsuki's member, and by extension me, pressed against her entrance, the warmth and wetness enveloping us both. 
I could feel every twitch, every pulse, as he prepared to enter her, the moment stretching out in a suspended eternity. This was it, the culmination of the surreal nightmare I found myself in. As Katsuki began to push forward, I could only brace myself for the inevitable, my mind a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. The intimate connection between us, the physical sensations, and the emotional turmoil all collided in a dizzying cacophony. And so, with Katsuki poised to take Melissa's virginity, I was forced to confront the twisted reality of my existence. Trapped in this nightmarish scenario, my face lined up with Melissa's most private area. I could do nothing but endure and hope for a mercy that seemed impossibly far away. As he moved closer, I felt a mix of horror and a strange, unwanted excitement bubbling within me. Each centimeter closer made my heart pound harder, the anticipation both unbearable and electrifying. I wanted to close my eyes, to shut out the reality of what was happening, but I couldn't. My face was stretched taut over the tip of Katsuki's member, and I could only watch as he brought me closer to Melissa. Her giant lips were the first thing I felt, soft and yielding as they pressed against my face. The heat radiated from her, her wetness making everything slick and surreal. Katsuki pushed forward slowly, and I felt myself slide past her lips, enveloped by the tight, warm confines of her body. The sensation was overwhelming, every nerve in my transformed body lighting up with each millimeter of movement. Katsuki paused for a moment, fully sheathed within Melissa. The silence was filled with the sound of their heavy breathing, the air thick with the scent of their arousal. I could feel Melissa's body adjusting to the intrusion, her walls clenching and releasing in rhythmic waves that sent shudders through me. After what felt like an eternity, Katsuki began to pull out. The slow, deliberate motion was agonizing, each inch a torment as I was drawn back toward the outside world. My face stopped just at her entrance, the cool air of the room a stark contrast to the intense heat inside her. Without warning, Katsuki pushed back in, this time not pulling out entirely before sliding back in. The rhythm was slow at first, methodical. I felt every movement, the sensation of Melissa's walls sliding against me, the tightness that seemed to cling to every part of my form. With each thrust, Katsuki's pace quickened. The slow in-and-out motion gave way to a more urgent rhythm, the power behind each movement growing. Melissa's walls clenched around us, her body responding with increasing fervor. The friction was intense, the heat almost unbearable, but it was the overwhelming sensation of being completely enveloped and controlled that dominated my mind. Minutes passed, each one blending into the next as Katsuki's pace continued to increase. I was being pulled in and out at a rapid pace now, the world a blur of motion and sensation. Melissa's moans filled the air, a symphony of pleasure that seemed to echo through my entire being. I found myself strangely invested in their passion, the horror of my situation giving way to an inexplicable fascination. What had I been so upset about before? The thought was fleeting, drowned out by the relentless rhythm of their movements. Katsuki's thrusts became more erratic, each one more forceful than the last. I could feel the tension building, a crescendo that was impossible to ignore. Melissa's walls tightened around us, her body trembling with anticipation. Then, with a final, powerful thrust, Katsuki reached his peak. I felt a surge of warmth, a torrent of sensation as he released. My entire body was filled with the overwhelming rush of his climax, the intense pressure and heat flooding through me. It was as if every part of me was being stretched and expanded. The force of his release of physical and emotional tempest. As the waves of sensation began to subside, I was left to grapple with the aftermath. Trapped within the confines of Katsuki and Melissa's passion, I was filled with a strange sense of completion. The horror of my situation had been drowned out by the raw intensity of the experience, and as the world slowly came back into focus, I was left to confront the reality of my new existence. I felt Katsuki pulling out of Melissa, and with each inch, I was dragged away from the heat and pressure of her giant lips. The world outside rushed back in, cooler air brushing against my stretched form as I emerged, still clinging to the now softening member of Katsuki. The intense sensory overload of moments before was replaced by a dull, throbbing, Awareness of my surroundings, Katsuki lay back on the bed, his chest heaving with the effort of their recent exertions. His member, still sheathed in my now thin, stretched form, softened gradually. I hung limply, feeling every subtle twitch and pulse as he caught his breath. The ceiling above me was a distant, indifferent void, contrasting sharply with the intimate and overwhelming closeness of just moments ago. Minutes passed, filled only with the sound of Katsuki's heavy breathing and the soft rustle of the bedsheets. Then, with a decisive movement, he reached down and grasped me firmly. I felt myself being pulled away from him, the sensation of detachment strange and unsettling. As he brought me up to his face, his smirk was the first thing I saw, his eyes gleaming with a mix of satisfaction and condescension. Well, Deku, he said, his voice low and taunting. Guess you were good for something after all. Without another word, he tied a knot at the end of the condom, sealing in the remnants of his release. The motion was casual, almost careless but it felt like the final nail in the coffin of my old life. 
With a flick of his wrist, he tossed me through the air. I tumbled end over end, the world spinning in a dizzying blur, before landing with a soft thud in the bottom of a garbage can. The darkness of the can was suffocating, the smell of discarded refuse surrounding me. I lay there, inert and helpless, as the sounds of Katsuki and Melissa faded into the distance. Time lost all meaning in that stinking abyss. I could hear the distant echoes of their lives continuing above me, each sound a reminder of the world I was no longer part of. Days passed in a slow, agonizing crawl. Occasionally, the lid of the garbage can would open, and light would spill in. Melissa's face would appear, giant and indifferent, as she tossed in another piece of trash. Each time, I hoped she might notice me, might recognize something amiss, but she never did. I was just another piece of garbage to be discarded, a silent witness to her routine. After a week, the inevitable happened. Melissa began humming a cheerful tune as she lifted the garbage bag from the can. I felt myself being jostled around, the world outside becoming a shifting blur of light and shadow. As she tied the bag and hefted it over her shoulder, I caught a glimpse of her smiling face, oblivious to my presence within the trash. As she carried the bag outside, I felt a strange mix of despair and resignation. This was my fate now, a forgotten piece of refuse destined for the landfill. But then, a familiar voice broke through the silence. Katsuki's. Hey, Melissa, he called, his tone playful and possessive. I felt the bag shift as she turned to face him. From my position at the bottom, I could only see the distorted outline of their figures through the thin plastic. Katsuki wrapped his arm around Melissa's waist, pulling her close. His smirk was evident in his voice as he looked down at the bag, taking out the trash. Huh, he said, his tone dripping with smug satisfaction. Melissa laughed, the sound bright and carefree. Yeah, it was getting a bit full. Katsuki's eyes looked down mockingly at the bag as if he could see me. His smirk widened, and he gave me a final, mocking salute before turning his attention back to Melissa. Good job, he said, his voice fading as they walked away together. Let's get back inside. As the bag was placed on the curb, waiting for the garbage truck to take it away, I lay at the bottom, surrounded by the detritus of their lives. The last thing I saw was Katsuki's arm wrapped around Melissa's waist. Their figures receding into the distance. The world moved on, indifferent to my silent suffering, and I knew that my life, as it once was, had truly ended. Izuku, I sat at my desk, textbooks and notes sprawled out in front of me, the quiet hum of my dorm room offering a semblance of peace amidst the chaos of university life at Yua Academy. The late afternoon sun filtered through the curtains, casting a warm glow over my cluttered study space. I was so absorbed in my studies that I almost missed the soft knock at my door. Come in, I called, not bothering to look up from my notes. The door creaked open, and a familiar, sultry voice filled the room. Izuku, darling, are you busy? I glanced up, my heart skipping a beat as I saw Midnight standing in the doorway. Her figure, clad in her signature revealing outfit, was a stark contrast to the mundane surroundings of my dorm room. Her presence was like a force of nature, demanding attention and respect. Oh, uh, Midnight. No, I mean, yes, I was studying, but it's okay. What can I do for you? I stammered, feeling my face heat up. She stepped into the room, her heels clicking softly against the floor. I need a favor, Izuku, she said, her tone sweet yet tinged with mischief. And it's something only you can help me with. I felt a mix of confusion and curiosity bubbling inside me. What kind of favor? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. Midnight smiled, a playful glint in her eyes. You see, I need a new bedroom toy. And I thought, why not make it interesting? I want you to transform for me. My mind raced, trying to process her words. You mean, use my quirk to become... A dildo, I asked, incredulously. Exactly, she exclaimed, clapping her hands together in excitement. You're special, Izuku. I wouldn't ask just anyone to do this, you know. I gulped, my throat suddenly dry. The idea was bizarre, yet the way she presented it made it sound almost reasonable. And the thought of being able to help her, to be chosen for something unique, stirred a sense of pride within me. All right, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. I'll do it. Midnight's eyes lit up with delight. Wonderful, I knew I could count on you. She moved closer, her presence overwhelming. Leaning down, she whispered in my ear, I wouldn't ask just anyone to do this, you know. I activated my quirk, the ability to transform into any object. The sensation was strange, a tingling warmth spreading through my body. Midnight stepped back, watching with keen interest as a blue glow enveloped me, signaling the beginning of my transformation. I felt my body morphing, reshaping itself into something entirely different. My vision blurred, and I lost my balance, collapsing onto the floor. The transformation was complete. The world seemed vastly different now. Midnight's towering figure loomed over me as she bent down and picked me up. I caught a glimpse of my new form in the mirror, a green-colored dildo, completely unassuming in her hand. Midnight held me up to her body, a satisfied smile playing on her lips. Welcome to your new life, honey, she murmured, her eyes gleaming with a mixture of amusement and affection. 
My world became a blur as midnight carried me back to her empty classroom. The once familiar corridors of Yue University felt strangely alien from my new perspective. Her footsteps echoed softly against the tiled floor, each step a reminder of my new, bizarre reality. As we entered her classroom, the scent of chalk dust and her faint perfume filled the air. She gently placed me on her desk, the cool surface a stark contrast to the warmth of her hands. I lay there, still adjusting to my new form, surrounded by stacks of student papers that now seemed like towering structures. Midnight's face appeared above me, her eyes sparkling with a mix of curiosity and satisfaction. She picked me up again, her touch firm yet careful, and brought me closer to her body. The warmth of her skin radiated through me as she positioned me near her entrance. It was then I realized that my eyes were at the tip of my new form, giving me a clear view of her nether region. The realization was both shocking and fascinating, adding another layer of strangeness to the situation. Don't worry, Izuku, she murmured, her voice a soothing melody that resonated through my entire being. Just follow my lead, and you'll do perfectly. Without further ado, she thrust me inside her. The sensation was overwhelming, a blend of heat, pressure, and an almost suffocating closeness. I was a bit too big at first, causing her to pause and guide me with gentle contractions and whispered instruction. That's it, Izuku, just a little smaller. Perfect, she said, her tone filled with satisfaction as I adjusted my size to fit her comfortably. She began to place her costume on, her motions calm and deliberate. I could feel the rhythmic pulse of her heartbeat, the steady rise and fall of her breathing. Each subtle shift and movement was a reminder of my new purpose, my willingness to help in any way I could. Midnight's fingers brushed against me, pushing me deeper inside as she readjusted her uniform. The sensation was both intimate and surreal, a constant reminder of the unusual circumstances. As she pulled her costume into place, the pressure increased, and I found myself firmly nestled within her. Her costume was snug, the fabric pressing against me in a way that was both comforting and restrictive. She started by sliding her arms into the sleeves, each movement causing me to shift slightly inside her. I felt the tug of the fabric as she adjusted it over her shoulders, the tightness adding to the sense of closeness between us. Next, she smoothed the costume over her chest and torso, the tight material molding to her curves. Every touch, every adjustment was a reminder of my new role, my new place. She pulled the costume down over her hips, the fabric pressing me even more snugly inside her. As she finished adjusting her costume, she looked in the mirror, her eyes gleaming with a mixture of amusement and satisfaction. She gave a final push on the outside, ensuring I was securely in place, the pressure adding a new layer of intimacy to our connection. Welcome to your new life, honey, she said softly, a contented smile playing on her lips. The words resonated through me, a testament to my willingness to embrace this strange new reality. Midnight, as I carried Izuku back to my empty classroom, I could feel the anticipation building within me. The quiet hallways of Yue University echoed with the click of my heels, a stark contrast to the turmoil of excitement I felt inside. Entering the classroom, I gently placed him on my desk, the cool surface a temporary resting place before the real adventure began. Picking him up again, I positioned him near my entrance. I could see his eyes at the tip of his new form, a strange yet endearing reminder of who he truly was. Without further hesitation, I thrust him inside me. The initial sensation was intense. He was too big at first, causing me to gasp softly. Just a little smaller, Izuku, I whispered, guiding him with gentle contractions of my muscles. You need to adjust to fit perfectly. I felt him responding, his form shifting slightly, becoming smaller. The pressure eased, and I could feel him settling into place, fitting just right. The sensation was a delightful mix of fullness and comfort, a perfect blend that left me feeling satisfied and eager for what was to come. That's perfect, I murmured, a smile spreading across my lips as I felt him adjust. Now, just stay like that. With Izuku securely inside me, I moved to readjust my uniform. I started by sliding my arms into the sleeves, each motion causing him to shift slightly within me, sending waves of pleasure through my body. I took a moment to savor the feeling, biting my lip to keep from gasping aloud. Next, I smoothed the fabric over my chest and torso, the tight material molding to my curves. Every touch, every adjustment was a reminder of the intimate connection we now shared. I pulled the costume down over my hips, the snug fit pressing Izuku even more firmly inside me. The pressure was exquisite, adding a layer of intimacy and control to our connection. Once my costume was in place, I took a deep breath, feeling a sense of completeness. I was ready to face the day, knowing that my secret would remain hidden, adding an extra thrill to every interaction. Izuku, my world was confined and suffused with warmth as midnight walked through the quiet corridors of Yui University. Each step she took caused me to bob up and down slightly, the movement pressing me gently against her inner walls. The sensation was a constant reminder of my strange new reality, but I was determined to make the best of it. I could feel her heartbeat, a steady rhythm that set the pace for the subtle contractions of her muscles. 
Every step brought a new wave of pressure and warmth, and I quickly learned to wiggle myself slightly, adding to her pleasure and keeping her in a happy mood. It was a strange form of communication, but one that I hoped was appreciated. Midnight. I walked through the halls with practiced ease, my face a mask of composure. Years of experience as the R-rated hero had taught me how to maintain control in any situation, but this was something entirely different. With each step, I felt Izuku moving inside me. His subtle wiggling keeping me on edge and filled with a delicious sense of anticipation. Every shift of his form, every gentle nudge, sent shivers through my body. I bit my tongue to keep from gasping aloud, a small smile playing on my lips. This was indeed a great idea. It added an unexpected thrill to the mundane task of walking to the teacher's lounge. Izuku, I felt every step, every shift of Midnight's body. The gentle rise and fall, the subtle contractions of her muscles, the warmth surrounding me, it was an overwhelming symphony of sensations. I focused on moving just enough to keep her happy, wiggling slightly whenever I felt the opportunity. Each movement seemed to elicit a response from her, a tightening of her muscles or a slight change in her breathing. It was a strange form of feedback, but it was all I had to go on. I hoped it was enough to show her that I was willing to help in any way I could. Midnight. I reached the teacher's lounge and took a deep breath, preparing to face my colleagues. As I sat down, a gasp escaped my lips before I could stifle it. The pressure of sitting caused Izuku to press even more tightly against my inner walls, sending a jolt of pleasure through me. I quickly masked my reaction, slipping into the role of the composed, professional teacher. Midnight, you alright? Aizawa's voice was filled with his usual monotone concern. I'm fine, I replied smoothly, flashing a reassuring smile. Just a long day. As I began discussing upcoming UA activities with Aizawa and present Mike, I felt Izuku's presence within me, a constant reminder of our secret. Every word I spoke, every breath I took, was accompanied by the subtle, delightful pressure of him moving inside me. It added a layer of excitement to the otherwise mundane conversation, making me feel more alive and engaged. Izuku, I could hear the muffled voices of Aizawa and present Mike, their words indistinct but filled with the familiar tones of conversation. I felt Midnight's breathing change, her voice steady and composed despite the intimate situation. It was impressive, really, how she managed to keep such control. I continued to move ever so slightly, hoping to maintain the delicate balance that kept her happy. It was a strange, surreal experience, but one that I found myself strangely proud to be part of. I was helping her in a way that no one else could, and that meant something. Midnight. As the conversation flowed, I felt a sense of pride in my ability to maintain my composure. The thrill of having Izuku inside me, his subtle movements keeping me on edge, was a delicious secret that only I knew. It made the mundane task of discussing school activities feel exciting and new. I glanced around the room, my colleagues oblivious to the intimate connection I shared with my student. It was a heady feeling, one that made me feel more alive and in control than ever before. I took a deep breath, steadying myself, and continued the conversation with a smile. I sat, maintaining a composed exterior as I conversed with Aizawa and present Mike about upcoming U activities. Every word I spoke was measured, my face a mask of calm professionalism. Yet, beneath that facade, an intense, delightful tension simmered, thanks to Izuku's presence inside me. As I shifted in my seat to get more comfortable, a wave of pleasure rippled through me. Izuku moved, his form clenching against my inner walls in a way that sent shivers up my spine. Despite my best efforts, a tiny moan escaped my lips. I quickly turned it into a cough, glancing at Aizawa and Present Mike to see if they noticed. You okay, Midnight? Present Mike asked, raising an eyebrow. I'm fine, I replied, smiling smoothly. Just a tickle in my throat. Izuku, I could hear the muffled conversation outside, but my focus was entirely on the sensations surrounding me. The warmth, the rhythmic pulse of Midnight's body, and the subtle shifts as she moved all contributed to a sensory overload. When she shifted and a wave of pleasure rolled through her, I felt it too, the tight embrace of her walls squeezing me in response. An idea formed in my mind. I decided to test the limits of my new form and see if I could enhance her pleasure. I grew just a tiny bit, pressing more firmly against her walls, feeling her react instantly. Then I shrank slightly, only to grow again. The effect was immediate and powerful. Midnight. As I tried to focus on the conversation, another wave of pleasure hit me, more intense this time. Izuku had changed his size, growing tighter against my walls before shrinking again. He repeated this several times, each time sending a jolt of sensation through my body. It was hard to keep my composure. I adjusted myself in my seat, clenching my fist subtly to anchor myself. My colleagues continued talking, seemingly oblivious to the turmoil inside me. Each time Izuku grew and shrank, a new surge of pleasure coursed through me. It took all my willpower to maintain my professional demeanor. So, about the sports festival, Aizawa was saying, his voice steady and monotone. We need to finalize the schedule. 
Yes, of course, I replied, my voice slightly strained. I bit my lip, feeling another wave of pleasure. I'm on it. Izuku, I felt Midnight's reactions, her muscles clenching around me in response to my movements. It was a strange and intimate connection, knowing that I could bring her pleasure even in this form. I continued my pattern of growing and shrinking, hoping to keep her happy and engaged. The pressure and warmth were almost overwhelming, but I focused on maintaining the delicate balance. Each time I grew, I felt her walls tighten around me, and each time I shrank, there was a momentary release before the next wave. It was a constant dance of sensation. Midnight, I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. The pleasure was building, making it difficult to concentrate. I shifted in my seat again, feeling Izuku's movements intensify the sensations. It was both exhilarating and challenging to keep a straight face. Midnight, you seem a bit distracted, present Mike noted, his tone curious. I'm just fine, I managed to say, forcing a smile. It's been a long day. As the conversation continued, I focused on my breathing, using the techniques I had learned over years of hero work to maintain control. The thrill of our secret added a layer of excitement to the otherwise mundane meeting. Izuku, I continued my efforts, sensing Midnight's pleasure with each change in size. It was a strange form of communication, but one that felt incredibly meaningful. I hoped that my actions were making her happy, providing a small comfort in her busy day. Each movement, each shift, reinforced my resolve. I was determined to be of help in any way I could, even in this unusual form. The connection between us was unlike anything I had ever experienced, and it filled me with a sense of purpose. Midnight as the meeting drew to a close, I felt a sense of relief and satisfaction. Despite the challenges, I had managed to maintain my composure, thanks in no small part to Izuku. The pleasure he brought me was a constant reminder of our unique connection, a secret thrill that made everything more exciting. Well, I think that's everything, Aizawa said, gathering his papers. Yes, thank you, I replied, standing up carefully. Let's get to work. With a final, subtle shift, I felt Izuku settle into place, ready for whatever came next. As I walked out of the lounge, a small, contented smile played on my lips. This was our secret, and it was perfect. As Aizawa and present Mike walked away from the table, I felt a wave of relief. The tension of maintaining my composure was beginning to take its toll. Just as I started to relax, Izuku decided to make his presence known again. He grew slightly larger, pressing more firmly against my inner walls, and began to wiggle before shrinking a bit once more. The sensation was overwhelming. My grip on the edge of the table tightened, my knuckles turning white as the pleasure built to an unbearable peak. I bit my lip, trying to stifle a moan, but it was no use. The intensity of the sensations coursing through me was too much. I could feel my body responding, the wave of an orgasm crashing over me with a force I had never experienced before. Izuku, the moment I felt Midnight's body tense, I knew she was close. I increased my size slightly, pressing harder against her walls while wiggling gently. The reaction was immediate and intense. Her muscles clenched around me, the tight embrace sending a wave of heat through my form. I felt her walls tremble and convulse with such power that it left me breathless. Her release coated me completely, the warmth and moisture enveloping me in a way that was both overwhelming and strangely comforting. The force of her orgasm was unlike anything I had ever experienced, a testament to our unique connection. Midnight. My body trembled as the orgasm subsided, leaving me breathless and flushed. I released the table, my fingers aching from the tight grip. I took a few heavy breaths, trying to compose myself. Just then, Cementos approached me, his expression serious as he began discussing my task as the referee for the upcoming event. Midnight, are you okay? You seem a bit out of breath, Cementos observed, his tone concerned. I'm fine, I managed to say, forcing a smile despite the exhaustion that weighed down on me. Just a bit winded. It's been a long day. Izuku, I could hear the muffled conversation outside, but my focus was on the sensations surrounding me. Midnight's body was still trembling slightly, the aftershocks of her orgasm creating a rhythmic pulse around me. I tried to remain still, hoping to give her a moment to recover. Her breathing was heavy, each inhale and exhale sending subtle vibrations through me. The warmth of her release still surrounded me, a reminder of the intense connection we had just shared. It was a surreal experience, but one that made me feel strangely proud. I had been able to bring her pleasure, to make her happy in a way that no one else could. Midnight, as I listened to Cementos, I found it difficult to focus. My body was still tingling from the intensity of the orgasm, and I could feel Izuku's presence inside me, a constant reminder of our secret. It was hard to concentrate on the details of the task at hand, but I forced myself to pay attention, nodding politely as Cementos explained my responsibilities. Thank you, Cementos. I appreciate the update, I said, my voice slightly strained. I'll make sure everything goes smoothly. He nodded and walked away, leaving me alone at the table. I took a moment to collect myself, taking deep breaths to steady my racing heart. 
The flush on my face was still present, a telltale sign of the pleasure I had just experienced. Izuku, I could sense that Midnight was struggling to maintain her composure. Her body was still reacting to the intensity of the orgasm, and I could feel her muscles contracting slightly around me. I tried to remain as still as possible, hoping to give her some relief. The conversation outside continued, but my focus was entirely on Midnight. Her breathing was gradually returning to normal, each breath a reminder of the intimate connection we shared. It was a strange feeling, knowing that I was inside her, a part of her in such a unique way. Midnight, as I stood up from the table, I could feel my legs trembling slightly. The walk back to my office seemed longer than usual, each step a reminder of the intense pleasure I had just experienced. Izuku's presence inside me was a constant source of warmth and comfort, and I couldn't help but smile at the thought of our secret. I had not expected this event to be as great as it was. The thrill of having Izuku inside me, the intensity of the pleasure he brought, was unlike anything I had ever experienced. It was a secret that I cherished, a unique connection that made me feel more alive than ever before. As I reached the door to the teacher's lounge, I took one last deep breath, steadying myself. The flush on my face had begun to fade, replaced by a contented glow. With a final, subtle shift, I felt Izuku settle into place, ready for whatever came next. Thank you, Izuku, I whispered softly, a small smile playing on my lips. For everything. With that, I stepped out of the lounge, feeling a sense of satisfaction and anticipation for what lay ahead. Izuku, waking up at Yua University always felt like a blend of anticipation and anxiety. The transition from high school to university brought not just a heavier academic load, but a complex web of relationships and responsibilities. My quirk, the ability to transform into any object for 24 hours, often made me the go-to person for peculiar requests. Today, however, was bound to be different, as it was Tsuyu Asui who approached me with a request. Her gentle yet determined eyes looked directly into mine as she spoke, Midoriya, can I borrow your services for today? I blinked, caught off guard. Sure, Tsuyu, what do you need? Follow me, she said, leading the way with her usual calm demeanor, her frog-like traits making her movements almost hypnotic. As we walked through the corridors, I couldn't help but wonder what kind of request Tsuyu had in mind. She wasn't one to ask for help unless it was really important. We arrived at her room, the door slightly ajar. Pushing it open, she motioned for me to enter first. Stepping inside, I was greeted by a sight that made my heart skip a beat. Mina Ashido, with her vibrant pink skin, was lounging on the bed in tight-fitting lingerie that perfectly complemented her hue. She flashed me a saucy wink and a playful wave. Hi, Midoriya, she purred, her voice dripping with mischief. Before I could process what was happening, Tsuyu turned to me with an uncharacteristically sweet tone. Izuku, we need you to transform into a condom for us. My mind raced. I was used to strange and specific requests, given the versatility of my quirk, but this was entirely unexpected. My eyes darted between Tsuyu's calm yet earnest expression and Mina's eager, almost giddy, anticipation. For a moment, I hesitated. The implications of their request were clear. And while I'd done many things with my quirk, this was a first. Uh, are you sure? I stammered, still trying to grasp the situation. Yes, Tsuyu replied firmly. It's important to us. Mina, unable to contain her excitement, bounced off the bed and planted several quick kisses on my cheek, her warm lips leaving a trail of tingling sensations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She squealed, her enthusiasm infectious. Tsuyu gently pulled Mina back, calming her down before they both settled on the bed, their gazes fixed on me expectantly. Taking a deep breath, I focused on my quirk. I could feel the familiar sensation of my body changing, shifting into a new form. It always felt strange, like an intense tingling spreading from my core to my extremities. In a blink, I transformed into a condom, neatly packaged in a wrapper. Through the limited vision of my new form, I could see the room from an unusual perspective. Everything seemed larger, more imposing. Suyu and Mina's faces came into view, their expressions filled with a mixture of curiosity and excitement. Mina's hand reached out, her fingers delicately picking up my wrapper. She brought me closer to her face, her smile wide and genuine. You're the best, Midoriya, she whispered, her breath warm against the plastic. As Mina bent over to pick me up, her smile radiated a sense of genuine happiness that warmed my transformed state. The intimacy of the moment, the trust they placed in me, it was overwhelming and oddly touching. It was a strange feeling, knowing I was helping them in such a personal way. Mina's grip tightened slightly as she turned to give Tsuyu a look so sultry, it sent a shiver down my plastic spine. I could feel her fingers pressing against my sides through the wrapper the world a distorted haze of pastel colors and shadows. As she sauntered over to the bed, her hips swaying with each step, I could sense the anticipation building. 
Su Yu lay back, her legs slightly parted, a visible tension in her muscles. Her usual calm demeanor was replaced by something raw and hungry. She pulled down her skirt and underwear, revealing an erect penis that stood proudly, the tip glistening slightly under the dim light. The sight was surreal, and even in my current state, the intimacy of the moment was palpable. Nina's eyes fixed on Tsuyu's member, her gaze filled with unrestrained hunger. She brought me up to her mouth, and I could hear the faint tearing sound as she ripped open my wrapper with her teeth. The sensation of the cool air against my form was fleeting before I was enveloped in the warm, moist cavern of Mina's mouth. Her tongue slid over my surface, tasting me, her breath hot and humid. Without warning, Mina sank to her knees in front of Tsuyu, bringing her face level with the erect member. With a deft movement, she used her mouth to wrap me around Tsuyu's erection. The world became a tight, heated tunnel. I felt myself stretch, molding to every curve and contour of Tsuyu's shaft. Each vein, each pulse of her heartbeat, was transmitted through my form in an intimate symphony of sensation. My vision, limited but focused, centered on the tip of Tsuyu's erection, now sheathed within me. Mina's giant face loomed into view, her eyes dark with desire. Her tongue flicked out, brushing against Tsuyu's member with a delicate touch that sent shudders through both of us. The hunger in her gaze was almost overwhelming. I hope you both enjoy this, Mina purred, her voice a sultry whisper that vibrated through my entire being. She closed her eyes and let her tongue trail along the length of Tsuyu's erection, tracing every vein and ridge. The sensation was electric, a mix of warmth and moisture that heightened the intensity of the moment. Mina's lips wrapped around the head, her tongue skillfully teasing and caressing as she began to bob up and down. Each movement was precise, deliberate. Her tongue danced over the sensitive tip, sending waves of pleasure coursing through Tsuyu and, by extension, through me. The rhythm was steady, building gradually, the sensation of being stretched and caressed blending into a seamless wave of heat and pressure. I could feel Tsuyu's pleasure intensify with each motion, her heartbeat quickening, her muscles tensing and relaxing in a synchronized dance. This intimate dance continued for what felt like an eternity, each moment more intense than the last. Mina's expertise was evident in every flick of her tongue, every controlled movement of her lips. She was relentless, her mouth a whirlwind of pleasure that seemed to push Tsuyu to the brink. Finally, Mina withdrew, her lips parting from Tsuyu's erection with a wet, popping sound. Saliva dripped down, a glistening testament to the fervent activity. Her giant face slowly backed away, a satisfied smile playing on her lips, her eyes twinkling with mischief and triumph. Tsuyu's booming voice reverberated around me, a mixture of irritation and command that cut through the haze of sensation. Mina, you can't just leave me unfinished, she scolded, her words vibrating through the air like a physical force. From my confined perspective, I saw her slowly stand up, her movements deliberate and precise, as if calculating the next steps in a well-rehearsed routine. With surprising gentleness, Suyu maneuvered Mina onto the bed, positioning her in a doggy-style pose. The sight was a mixture of raw sensuality and power, Mina's body arching gracefully, her vibrant skin contrasting starkly with the sheets. Suyu's hands found Mina's waist, strong and steady, before I was positioned directly behind Mina's ass. The proximity was overwhelming. Every detail magnified in my limited vision. A sharp smack echoed as Tsuyu slapped Mina's ass, the flesh jiggling under the impact. Get ready for what's next, Tsuyu warned, her voice carrying a mix of excitement and authority. With swift determination, Tsuyu plunged her erection into Mina. The sudden invasion was met with a gasp from Mina, her body tensing before melting into the rhythm Tsuyu set. Each thrust was powerful and unrelenting, driving deeper and deeper, pushing me along for the ride. The walls of Mina's body clenched around me, a tight, heated embrace that left no room for hesitation. The pace quickened, the bed creaking under the intensity of their movements. Mina's moans grew louder, a symphony of pleasure that punctuated each thrust. The sound of skin slapping against skin filled the room, each impact sending ripples through both their bodies. Every now and then, another slap landed on Mina's ass, eliciting a sharper cry that added to the crescendo of their passion. From my confined perspective, everything was a whirlwind of motion and sensation. Suyu's strong hands gripped Mina's waist, each thrust driving deep and hard, sending shockwaves through both their bodies. The force of each movement stretched me to my limits, the walls of Mina's insides clenching and releasing in a relentless, rhythmic dance. Every thrust was a blend of pressure and heat, the friction a constant reminder of my precarious position. Suyu's erection, firm and insistent, pushed me deeper into Mina with every powerful motion. The tight, wet embrace of Mina's body surrounded me. Her inner muscles contracting rhythmically around us. The sensation was almost overwhelming. Each pulse and squeeze a vivid testament to their intense connection. Suyu's pace was unyielding, her movements precise and powerful. Each thrust was a calculated strike, driving her deeper, the impact sending ripples through Mina's body. I could feel every vein on Suyu's erection, the heat of her skin and the steady pounding of her heart. 
The room was filled with the sounds of their passion. Mina's moans, the wet slap of skin against skin, and Tsuyu's labored breaths. The pressure was immense, the heat almost suffocating. I was caught in a tempest of sensation. My form stretched and pulled with each thrust. The rhythm quickened, the intensity building to a fever pitch. Mina's moans grew louder, each cry a testament to the pleasure coursing through her. The relentless thrusting continued, each movement a precise and powerful stroke. Suyu's hands tightened on Mina's waist, the grip almost bruising. The sensation of being driven deep within Mina, feeling every pulse and clench of her body, was a dizzying blend of pleasure and pressure. Time seemed to blur, the relentless rhythm consuming all sense of reality. I was acutely aware of every clench and release of Mina's muscles, the pressure building with each passing moment. Suyu's breath came in ragged gasps, her control unwavering as she drove towards the inevitable climax. Suddenly, the thrusting stopped. Suyu's member braced deep within Mina, the tension reaching a breaking point. The walls around me clenched tightly, the pressure almost unbearable. I could feel Tsuyu's heartbeat pounding through her erection, a steady drumbeat that heralded the climax. Then, with a final, powerful thrust, Tsuyu released. Giant spurts of cum filled me, the force and volume overwhelming my senses. Each pulse was a torrent, flooding my form with a warmth that was both foreign and intimate. I tried to hold myself together, but the sheer intensity was too much. The pressure built and built until, finally, I couldn't withstand it any longer. I burst, my form dissolving in a flood of sensations that left me reeling. Darkness enveloped me, a void of nothingness that felt like a merciful release. Time lost all meaning as I floated in this space, my consciousness a fragile thread barely holding on. When I woke up, it was in the familiar comfort of my own bed. The sunlight streamed through the window, casting gentle shadows on the walls. The events of the previous day felt like a distant dream, their vivid intensity lingering in my mind. I lay there, processing the memories, the strange mixture of intimacy and vulnerability that had defined my experience. The bonds we formed at UA University were unique, pushing boundaries and exploring depths of trust I had never imagined. And as I lay there, I realized that despite the strangeness of it all, I had no regrets. We were a family, bound by experiences that transcended the ordinary, and in that, there was a beauty that I wouldn't trade for anything. Izuku, I had never imagined a simple errand could turn into such an awkward situation. The day started off normal enough. My classes at Ua University had ended for the day and Momo had asked to borrow my notes on advanced hero tactics. Of course, I was more than happy to oblige. Momo was diligent and incredibly smart, and any opportunity to help her was an honor. I made my way to her dorm room, clutching the neatly organized notes. The dormitory halls were quiet, a stark contrast to the bustling day I'd just had. I knocked on her door gently, and when there was no answer, I decided to leave the notes on her nightstand and as she had instructed in her message. As I stepped into Momo's room, the first thing that struck me was its meticulous organization. Everything had its place, from the bookshelves lined with textbooks to the neatly made bed. I walked over to the nightstand, placed the notes down, and turned to leave. That's when it happened. A strange sensation washed over me, starting in my chest and spreading rapidly through my body. My vision blurred and then shifted dramatically as I felt myself shrinking, my limbs flattening and fusing with the floor. Panic gripped me, but it was too late. My quirk had activated on its own, and before I could comprehend what was happening, I had transformed into a floor mat. My vision was bizarrely centered in the middle of the mat, making it difficult to take in my surroundings. I couldn't move or speak, just lay there, an inanimate object in Momo's room. It won't be so bad, I tried to reassure myself. What could possibly happen in 24 hours? Footsteps echoed down the hallway, growing louder with each passing second. The door handle turned, and the door creaked open. Momo stepped inside, her presence immediately felt. Her foot descended onto my surface, the warmth and slight moisture from her skin seeping into my fibers. One of her feet landed squarely on my left eye, plunging it into darkness. Through my right eye, I had a clear view up her skirt, catching a glimpse of her white lace panties. She paused, looking down with a puzzled expression. This is odd, she murmured before moving further into the room, her weight a lingering pressure. Next, Achako entered, her steps light and delicate. She stopped just inside the doorway, marveling at the mat beneath her feet. Momo, this mat feels amazing, she exclaimed, wiggling her toes against me. Her foot pressed down on my right eye, and from my left eye, I could see up her skirt, noticing her pink panties adorned with a small bow. The warmth and gentle pressure were oddly comforting, a stark contrast to my helplessness. Mina's entrance was full of energy and enthusiasm. Her footsteps were lively, each one sending a jolt through my flattened form. Nice choice, Momo, she said with a laugh, her voice bright and cheerful. As she stepped on me, her foot briefly obscured my left eye, but not before I caught a glimpse of her blue striped panties. The impact of her energetic steps left a lingering sensation, a sharp reminder of my strange new reality. 
Finally, Gyra walked in, her steps measured and deliberate. She paused, standing directly over me with one foot on either side of my eyes. Her expression was one of mild curiosity. Then she stepped directly on my right eye, her toes curling slightly as she tested the texture. From my left eye, I could see up her skirt, catching a glimpse of her black panties with a small silver-studded design. She shifted her weight back and forth, pressing into me with deliberate care, her footfalls sending ripples of sensation through my being. Their voices filled the room, animated and lively. Let's move this mat closer to the bed so we can put our feet on it while we talk, Momo suggested. The other girls agreed enthusiastically. With a firm grip, Momo lifted the mat slightly and dragged it closer to the bed. The sensation of being moved was disorienting. But I couldn't do anything to stop it. I felt every fiber of my being stretch and shift as she repositioned me. Once I was in place, they all sat on the edge of the bed, their feet resting on me. From my new position, I had an even clearer view. Momo's feet were directly in front of my eyes, her toes occasionally wiggling. The soft, pale skin and the slight pressure of her weight were constants. Achako's feet joined hers, the pink polish on her toes catching the light. Mina's feet were next, their energetic movements leaving fleeting impressions on me. Finally, Gyro's feet settled down, her black painted toes and the slight calluses from her guitar playing adding a unique texture. As they talked, their feet shifted and moved on me, each movement a new sensation. The warmth of their skin, the slight moisture from their day's activities, and the gentle pressure were all intensely real. The view from my unobstructed eye remained filled with glimpses of their intimate attire. The details were striking, the texture of their skin, the warmth of their bodies, and the soft, colorful fabric of their panties. Momo's white lace, Achako's playful pink, Mina's bold blue stripes, and Gyro's edgy black with silver studs were vivid and memorable. Their conversation flowed naturally, filled with laughter and animated gestures. Each shift of their feet brought new waves of sensation. Momo absent-mindedly wiggled her toes, the subtle movements sending tingling sensations through me. Achako's feet moved playfully, occasionally pressing down harder, her toes curling and uncurling. Mina's energetic movements were a constant barrage of stimuli, each bounce and shift leaving fleeting impressions. Gyro, ever the quieter one, tested the mat with calculated presses, her toes curling and flexing with curiosity. The night stretched on, filled with their laughter and camaraderie. They moved occasionally, their feet pressing into me with each shift, leaving me with vivid, intimate sensations. The textures, warmth, and subtle movements were all consuming. Each girl had her unique way of interacting with the mat, creating a symphony of sensations that ebbed and flowed with their conversation. Momo's feet pressed into me with a gentle, rhythmic motion, her toes occasionally wiggling, exploring the texture. Achako's playful nature showed in her constant, light movements, her feet dancing on my surface. Mina's energetic presence was a series of quick, firm steps, each one leaving a brief but intense impression. Gyro's more deliberate, thoughtful movements were a contrast, her feet testing different spots, her toes flexing and pressing with curiosity. The night had settled in and the room was filled with the warm glow of lamps and the infectious laughter of friends. As they chatted and snacked, Mina's boundless energy was the catalyst for the next activity. Come on, let's dance, she exclaimed, leaping up from the bed. The others agreed with equal enthusiasm, and soon the room was alive with music from Momo's speaker. From my position as the floor mat, I could feel every vibration, each step sending ripples through my being. Mina's energetic dancing was the first to make contact. Her steps were quick and lively, each one a jolt that reverberated through me. Her feet pressed into my fibers with every bounce, the weight shifting rapidly from heel to toe. Her toes dug into the mat with each energetic leap, creating a cascade of sensations. Achako was next, her movements light and fluid. She giggled as she danced, her feet barely brushing the mat but still sending delightful tingles through my form. Her toes wiggled with every step, curling and uncurling in time with the music. Each gentle press of her feet was like a soft, rhythmic caress. Gyro joined in, her steps deliberate and precise. She moved with a quiet intensity, each footfall a firm, controlled press that sent steady waves through me. Her toes flexed and curled, the slight roughness of her calluses adding texture to the sensation. Every calculated step was a deliberate exploration of the mat beneath her. Momo's entry into the dance was graceful and flowing. Her feet moved with natural elegance, each step a gentle, rhythmic press that spread warmth through my fibers. Her toes occasionally wiggled, exploring the texture beneath them with curiosity. The soft, even pressure of her feet was a soothing counterpoint to the more vigorous movements of her friends. The room was alive with movement, each girl contributing her unique style to the dance. Mina's bounces were quick and sharp, each landing a burst of energy. Achako's light steps were playful and fleeting, each touch a brief, delightful sensation. Gyro's deliberate movements were firm and steady, each step a wave of controlled pressure. Momo's graceful dancing was a continuous, flowing presence, her feet moving with elegant rhythm. As the dance continued, the girls grew more animated. 
their movements more exuberant. Nina and Achako spun around, their laughter filling the room. Gyro smiled, her usual reserve giving way to the joy of the moment. Momo, caught up in the energy, moved with even more grace and enthusiasm. Then, in the midst of their dancing, Momo lost her balance. She stumbled backward, her arms flailing in a desperate attempt to regain her footing. Time seemed to slow as she fell, her body descending towards the mat, towards me. The impact was sudden and overwhelming. Momo landed hard, her full weight pressing down on my left eye, plunging it into darkness. Her ass made direct contact, the force of the landing sending a shockwave through my entire form. The sensation was intense. The warmth of her body, the firm press of her muscles, and the softness of her skin all combined into a single, overwhelming experience. I could feel the contours of her body, the slight give of her flesh as she settled. The weight was substantial, a constant, grounding pressure that left me acutely aware of every detail. Oh no, Momo, are you okay? Achako asked, concern evident in her voice. Momo laughed, slightly embarrassed but unhurt. I'm fine, just lost my balance, she replied, slowly getting up. The pressure lifted, leaving a lingering warmth and a vivid memory of the sensation. The girls helped Momo up, and they all laughed it off, resuming their dancing with renewed energy. Each step, each movement was a new wave of sensation, a reminder of the surreal experience I was living. The night continued with their joyous dancing. Each moment a new and vivid experience. Nina's energetic leaps, Achako's playful twirls, Gyro's deliberate steps, and Momo's graceful movements created a symphony of sensations that ebbed and flowed with the music. Each girl had her unique way of interacting with the mat, creating an ever-changing tapestry of sensations that made the night unforgettable. After a spirited round of dancing, the girls began to feel the fatigue set in. The room was filled with the sounds of heavy breathing and laughter as they slowly came to a halt collapsing onto the bed and floor in various states of exhaustion. I think we overdid it, Achako panted, a playful grin on her face. Yeah, but it was so much fun, Mina replied, wiping sweat from her forehead. Gyro nodded, her usual calm demeanor returning. Let's take a break. Momo, still catching her breath, agreed. Good idea, let's relax for a bit. The girls settled down, and Achako, in a moment of spontaneous comfort-seeking, decided to lay down on the mat. As she did, she positioned herself so that her breasts were pressed against the surface, her body sprawling out in a comfortable position. The sensation was immediate and intense. From my perspective, I could feel the weight and warmth of her body pressing into me. Her breasts, soft and pliable, squished against the mat, creating a constant, intimate pressure. The fabric of her shirt did little to mask the warmth and contours of her skin. Each breath she took caused subtle shifts, the gentle rise and fall adding to the sensory overload. Achako sighed contentedly, her body relaxing further. This mat is really comfortable, she murmured, her voice muffled slightly by her position. The other girls laughed and continued chatting, but my focus was entirely on Achako. The sensation of her breasts pressed against me was vivid and all-consuming. The soft, rounded shapes, the slight give of her flesh, and the warmth radiating from her body created a unique and overwhelming experience. Mina, still energetic despite the dancing, joined Achako on the floor, resting her head on her friend's back. You're right, Achako. This mat is really nice. The additional weight from Mina's head added a new layer of sensation. I could feel the slight pressure of her skull, the way her hair brushed against Achako's back, creating subtle, shifting sensations. Gyro and Momo remained on the bed their feet occasionally brushing against the mat as they stretched out and relaxed. Each touch was a reminder of their presence, a constant, grounding sensation that kept me acutely aware of my surroundings. The room settled into a comfortable silence, punctuated by the occasional murmur of conversation. Achako shifted slightly, adjusting her position. The movement caused her breasts to press and rub against the mat, sending new waves of sensation through me. The softness of her skin, the gentle pressure, and the warmth were all-consuming. Time seemed to stretch as I lay there, a silent observer and participant in their relaxation. Each breath, each subtle movement was a new experience, a vivid reminder of my unique perspective. The warmth of Achako's body, the occasional touch of the other girls, and the overall intimacy of the situation created a surreal and unforgettable experience. The girls' voices, though soft and relaxed, filled the room with a comforting hum. They talked about their classes, upcoming exams, and plans for the weekend. Each topic was a distraction from the intensity of the sensations. Yet each touch, each press, brought my focus back to the present moment. As Achako lay there, her body pressed against the mat, I could feel every detail, the gentle rise and fall of her chest with each breath, the slight shift of her weight as she adjusted, and the warmth that radiated from her skin. It was an experience unlike any other, a blend of intimacy and sensory overload that left me acutely aware of every moment. For now, I could do nothing but endure, a silent participant in their world. The details of their movements, the intimacy of their presence, and the strange closeness I felt were all-consuming and unforgettable. 
as they continued to relax and chat. Their occasional touches and movements created a constant, vivid tapestry of sensations. The first light of dawn filtered through my curtains, casting a gentle glow across my room. I stirred, feeling the familiar softness of my bed beneath me. My eyes fluttered open, and for a moment, I lay there in a state of confusion. The events of the previous night came rushing back, and I realized that my quirk's transformation had finally ended. I was back in my bed, safe and sound, as if nothing had happened. The transition from floor mat to human form had been seamless, and my quirk had once again proven its reliability in returning me to my starting point after 24 hours. I sat up slowly, stretching my limbs, feeling the normal sensations of my body returning. Memories of the past day flooded my mind. The unexpected activation of my quirk, the helplessness of being a floor mat, and the intimate, vivid experiences I had endured. The sensation of Momo's footsteps, Achako's playful wiggling toes, Mina's energetic dances, and Gyro's deliberate presses were all still fresh in my mind. Each detail, each moment was etched into my consciousness. I swung my legs over the side of the bed and stood up, taking a deep breath. It felt good to move again, to have control over my body. I walked to the window and looked out at the early morning sky, the city just beginning to wake up. The events of the previous day felt surreal, like a strange dream, yet I knew they had been all too real. I made my way to the bathroom, splashing cold water on my face. The reflection staring back at me looked the same as always. But I felt changed, more aware of the complexities of my quirk and the unusual situations it could create. I toweled off and headed back to my room, grabbing a fresh set of clothes. Today was a new day, with new challenges and classes at UA University. As I dressed, I mentally prepared myself for whatever lay ahead. My quirk had proven unpredictable, but it also reminded me of the importance of adaptability and resilience. With a final glance around my room, I grabbed my bag and headed out the door. The corridors of the dormitory were quiet, with only a few early risers moving about. As I walked, I couldn't help but smile at the thought of seeing my friends again. The memories of the past day were still vivid, but they also brought a sense of closeness and camaraderie. I reached the common area where we usually gathered before heading to class. Momo, Achako, Mina, and Jairo were already there, chatting and laughing. They looked up as I approached, their smiles warm and welcoming. Morning, Izuku. Achako greeted cheerfully. Morning, I replied, feeling a surge of gratitude for my friends. As we walked to class together, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. The experiences of the past day, though strange and unexpected, had taught me valuable lessons about friendship, resilience, and the unpredictable nature of life as a hero. And as always, I was ready to face whatever challenges Leia had may had summoned me down to her lab with that particular gleam in her eye, one that spoke of impending experimentation and the thrill of discovery. Despite her sometimes overwhelming enthusiasm, I always enjoyed our sessions. It was a chance to push the limits of my quirk and see what new boundaries I could explore. Midoriya, you're going to love this, she exclaimed, her voice vibrating with excitement. I have some new tests for your quirk. I could feel my heart race with anticipation. My quirk, which allowed me to shrink to the size of an ant and transform my body into a rubber-like material, had always fascinated me. The world looked so different from down there, and the abilities it gave me were both strange and exhilarating. All right, me. Let's see what you've got planned, I replied, trying to match her enthusiasm. Without hesitation, I focused on my quirk and felt the familiar tingle as my body began to shrink. Four inches tall seemed like a good starting point, and I stood on the cold metal bench, looking up at May, who now towered over me like a giant. The cold metal bench felt vast and alien as I stood on it, reduced to a mere four inches in height. May loomed over me, her face alight with a mixture of excitement and scientific curiosity. She held a massive textbook in her hands, the corners worn from countless hours of use. I could see the title, but it seemed irrelevant compared to the impending test. All right, Midoriya, ready? She asked, her voice booming from above. There was a hint of a smile playing on her lips. I nodded, bracing myself. The familiar sensation of my body shrinking, my muscles contracting, and my bones compacting until I was nothing more than a small, rubbery version of myself settled in. The world transformed into an intimidating landscape of gigantic proportions. With a swift motion, May brought the textbook down. The rush of air displaced by its descent whooshed around me. And then, all at once, the heavy tone collided with my tiny form. The impact was immediate and overwhelming. My body compressed under the weight, flattening like a piece of clay being pressed between two surfaces. The pressure was intense, but there was no pain. My unique quirk, which turned my body into rubber, ensured that I could withstand such forces. Still, the sensation was unlike anything else. I could feel every fiber of the book pressing into me, the coolness of the metal bench seeping through my flattened form. The texture of the paper fibers, the slight give of the metal surface beneath me, every detail was amplified. Time seemed to stretch on. I couldn't move, couldn't see anything but the dark underside of the book pressing down on me. 
The weight was constant, unyielding. Yet there was a strange comfort in knowing that my body could handle it. I focused on my breathing, slow and steady, despite the pressure constricting me. Minutes passed, though it felt much longer. Eventually, I sensed the slight shift in pressure as May prepared to lift the book. Slowly, the weight began to lessen, and light seeped in around the edges. With a final, almost reluctant lift, she removed the textbook, revealing my flattened form on the bench. For a moment, I lay there, feeling the cool air against my squished body. Then, like a spring uncoiling, I began to reform. My body, stretched thin and wide, started to contract and pull together. It was a bizarre sensation, like every part of me was being drawn back into place by invisible hands. Once fully reformed, I stretched my limbs, testing them. Everything felt normal, if a bit wobbly. I looked up at May, who was already jotting down notes, her eyes flicking back to me with that same intense curiosity. How did that feel, Midoriya? She asked, her pen poised above the notepad. Strange, I admitted, rolling my shoulders to shake off the lingering stiffness. Like being pressed flat but without any pain. More like being squeezed by a giant cushion. May nodded thoughtfully, scribbling something in her notes. Interesting. Your quirk's adaptability is fascinating. Next came the shoe. Shrinking down another inch, I found myself staring up at the sole of a sneaker. May's grin widened as she positioned it above me. The rubbery texture of the sole filled my vision. And then, with another swift motion, it came down. The shoe's impact was different from the book. The rubber sole had more give, compressing me in a way that felt almost soft, like being caught in a giant eraser. My body stretched and molded to fit the pattern of the tread, each groove and ridge imprinting itself on my form. I felt like a piece of chewed gum, pliable and elastic. May held the shoe in place for a moment, then shifted her weight, grinding it slightly. The sensation was bizarre, a mix of pressure and movement that left me feeling more like an object than a person. Yet, my body continued to adapt, flattening and stretching without any damage. Finally, she lifted the shoe, and I reformed once more. My body, having been squished and stretched, bounced back to its original shape. I stood there, catching my breath, while May took more notes. Your body acts just like rubber, she said, her voice filled with wonder. Amazing. Thanks, May, I said, a grin spreading across my face. Despite the oddness of the tests, I felt a sense of accomplishment. Each experiment brought me closer to understanding the full extent of my quirk, and that knowledge was invaluable in my journey to become a hero. Your body acts like chewing gum, May noted, her eyes gleaming with stars. I stood on the bench, now just three inches tall, feeling a mix of anticipation and curiosity. May's experiments were always unconventional, but I trusted her. She had proven time and again that she had a keen understanding of quirks and how to test them. Today was no different. All right, Midoriya, she said, her voice filled with excitement. This next test might feel a bit weird, but bear with me. Before I could respond, she reached down and picked me up between her fingers. The sensation of being lifted so effortlessly, as if I were a toy, was something I had gotten used to, yet it never ceased to amaze me. She brought me closer to her face, her eyes twinkling with curiosity. And then, with a swift motion, she popped me into her mouth. The warmth and moisture enveloped me instantly. It was a surreal experience, being inside May's mouth. Her tongue was a soft, wet surface beneath me, and I could feel the ridges of her palate above. The air was humid, and the sound of her breathing was loud and rhythmic. Then she began to chew. The first press of her teeth was startling. My rubbery body squished and deformed under the pressure, molding to the shape of her bite. There was no pain, just an intense sensation of being compressed and stretched. Her teeth felt like firm, relentless pads, pushing and grinding against me. Each movement of her jaw was a new wave of pressure, altering my shape in different ways. As she continued to chew, I could feel my body reacting like gum. I was pliable, stretchy, adapting to every motion of her mouth. Her tongue moved me around, pressing me against her teeth, then pulling me back. The sensation was constant and overwhelming, a mix of being squeezed and released, over and over. Minutes passed, though it felt much longer. I was acutely aware of every detail, the warmth, the wetness, the rhythmic grinding. It was an oddly intimate experience, being inside someone's mouth, yet it also felt like just another test of my quirk's limits. Finally, she stopped chewing and brought me to the front of her mouth. With a gentle push of her tongue, she spat me out onto a tray on the table. I landed with a wet plop, my body still in its chewed-up form. The cool air against my damp, flattened body was a relief. Slowly, I began to reform, my rubbery structure pulling back together until I was once again standing upright. I felt a bit wobbly, but otherwise fine. May was already jotting down notes, her eyes flicking up to me occasionally. Incredible, Midoriya. Your body handled that so well. How do you feel? Strange, but okay, I replied, shaking off the lingering sensations. Like being chewed up and spat out, but not hurt at all. She nodded, a satisfied smile on her face. Your quirk's adaptability is just amazing. Thank you for being such a good sport. May's eyes sparkled with a new idea. 
Her curiosity and inventiveness were both exhilarating and a little unnerving. I had to admit, her enthusiasm was infectious. All right, Midoriya, she said, pulling her shirt over her head and unclasping her bra. I tried to maintain my composure, reminding myself that this was purely for scientific purposes. I have a new experiment in mind. As I stood on the cold metal table, now shrunken to a mere three inches, my eyes were drawn upwards to May's towering form. Her enthusiasm for these experiments was always palpable, but today, there was an added layer of intensity in her gaze. Ready for the next test? Midoriya, she asked, her voice booming from above. Before I could respond, she began to unbutton her shirt, her movements deliberate and precise. As the fabric fell away, her bra came into view and I couldn't help but feel a mix of awe and nervousness. When she unclasped her bra, her breasts were fully revealed, hanging above me like twin mountains of flesh. The sheer scale of them was mesmerizing. Each subtle movement sent ripples through the soft skin, and I could see the fine details, the slight sheen of perspiration, the gentle rise and fall with each breath. They seemed impossibly large from my perspective, dominating my field of vision and casting a warm, shadowy glow over my tiny form. For a moment, I was utterly entranced. The sheer size and presence of May's breasts, looming above me, was overwhelming. The warmth radiated from her skin, and I could even feel the gentle breeze created by her movements. It was a strange, hypnotic sight and I found myself staring, captivated by the sheer enormity and softness of them. Then May's hands descended, gently but firmly pressing me down onto the table. Her touch was both authoritative and careful, flattening my body into a pliable, putty-like form. The mesmerizing sight of her breasts gave way to the intense sensation of being compressed and molded. Once I was thoroughly flattened, she lifted her hands and began to mold me, spreading my putty-like form onto her breast. The warmth of her skin contrasted sharply with the cold table, and I felt every contour and curve as she worked. Her touch was methodical, spreading me evenly across both breasts, smoothing me out like a second skin. It was a bizarre, almost surreal experience. I felt myself adhering to her, my body becoming a part of her. My vision, still intact, shifted as she continued to spread me around, unaware that my eyes had positioned themselves over her nipples. The sensation of her skin beneath me was incredibly detailed every pore and hair follicle registering in my mind. After a few minutes of this meticulous spreading, May seemed satisfied. She reached for her bra and shirt, slipping them back on. The tightness of the fabric pressing me firmly against her skin, compressing my putty-like form further. The world darkened as she secured her bra and pulled her shirt back over her head, enclosing me in a tight, warm cocoon. I could feel myself merging more closely with her skin, my form adapting to every movement and contour. My eyes, now molded with her nipples, experienced a strange new perspective, adding another layer to the surreal nature of the experiment. May grabbed her breasts a couple of times, adjusting her clothes and testing the fit. Each squeeze sent a ripple through my putty-like form, intensifying the connection. She looked down at herself, clearly satisfied with her work. This experiment could take a while, okay, greenie. She said out loud, her tone casual, as if this were just another day in the lab. Her voice reverberated through my entire being reminding me of my unique situation. Despite the strangeness of it all, I felt a sense of determination. This was another step in understanding my quirk. No matter how unconventional the method, encased in the warmth and tightness of May's clothes, I prepared myself for the duration of the experiment. Every movement she made, every shift and adjustment, became an intricate part of my awareness. This was a new frontier in the exploration of my quirk, and I was ready to see where it would take me. May's focus shifted away from me as soon as she started working on her other projects. I was a part of her now, spread thin and tightly molded against her breasts like a second skin. With each step she took, I was jostled and bounced around, my rubbery form adapting to every movement. It was an odd mix of sensations, being compressed and stretched in different ways as she moved, a constant reminder of my unique predicament. Time seemed to blur as the hours passed. May's steady activity kept me in a state of perpetual motion, and soon she began to sweat. The thin sheen of perspiration coated me, making me stick even more to her skin. The warmth and moisture added another layer to the already intense experience, each droplet of sweat melding into my form and making our connection even more intimate. After what felt like an eternity, May headed to the locker room to change. The familiar hum of conversation filled the air as the other girls chatted and laughed. I heard Mina's voice, bubbly and energetic, as she approached May. Hey, May, your girls are looking great today, Mina exclaimed, her eyes bright with mischief. Without warning, she reached out and gave May's breasts a playful squeeze. Her hands covered my face, pressing me further into May's soft flesh as she fondled her breasts. Mina's touch was firm and playful, her fingers kneading and squeezing. The sensation was overwhelming, each squeeze sending ripples through my form. I could feel her hands pressing and releasing, the warmth of her skin adding to the already intense heat. When Mina finally stepped back, May turned to look in the mirror, 
She walked up to it, her breasts, and me along with them, swinging from side to side with each step. As she got closer, her eyes narrowed, scrutinizing her reflection. For a brief, hopeful moment, I thought she might recognize me. But May only smiled, bringing her hands up to her breasts and giving them a few appreciative squeezes. They're looking good today, aren't they? She said aloud, her tone filled with satisfaction. Just then, Siyu approached from behind, wrapping her arms around May's waist and resting her chin on her shoulder. Yes, they certainly do, Siyu agreed, her voice sultry as she gazed at May's reflection in the mirror. Her hands joined May's, adding to the pressure and movement. Siyu's fingers were cool and firm, contrasting with May's warmth. The combination of their touches sent a series of sensations through my body, each squeeze and fondle blurring the line between where I ended and they began. Trapped within this bizarre and intimate experiment, I could only hope that eventually, someone would recognize me. Until then, I was at the mercy of every squeeze, every step, and every playful touch, experiencing the world through this unique and surreal lens. As May moved towards the showers, each step sent a ripple through my form. I was now intimately connected to her, no longer feeling like the person I once was but rather like an extension of her body. Her breasts, the sensations were overwhelming, yet oddly comforting. My world bounced and jostled with each of her movements, a constant reminder of my new existence. From my unique vantage point, I watched as she turned on the shower, the water spraying out in a warm, steady stream. The first droplets hit me with a surprising force, each one a tiny hammer that sent waves of sensation through my form. The warmth seeped into me, blending seamlessly with May's natural heat, creating a cocoon of comforting warmth. May reached for the bottle of liquid soap, her fingers closing around it with practiced ease. As she squeezed a generous amount into her palm, the fruity scent filled the steamy air. She began to lather her breasts, lather me, in circular motions. The soap was slick and smooth, her hands gliding effortlessly over my surface. The sensation was both soothing and exhilarating, a rhythmic pattern that blurred the boundaries between us even further. Each movement of her hands was a new wave of sensation. The way she spread the soap, the pressure of her fingers, the circular motions, it all combined to create an intoxicating experience. I felt every detail, every ridge and curve of her skin, every subtle shift and press. It was as if I was no longer just observing but truly a part of her, experiencing everything firsthand. Just as I was getting lost in the comforting rhythm, Mina approached. Her presence was unmistakable, a burst of energy that filled the steamy space. She wrapped her arms around me. Her breasts pressing firmly against me. The contact was electric, a jolt of sensation that intensified everything. Hey there, Mina whispered, her voice a soft murmur that vibrated through my entire being. She began to kiss me, her lips trailing along her neck before capturing her mouth in a passionate kiss. The kiss was slow and deep, each motion deliberate and sensual. As Mina's breasts rubbed against me, I was caught in the middle of their movements. The friction, the warmth, the slippery soap, it was overwhelming. Every touch, every press, was a new wave of sensation. I could feel their bodies moving in harmony, a dance of intimacy that I was now a part of. The sensation of their kisses, the way their skin moved and slid against each other, was a symphony of touch and warmth. When they finally parted, a thin string of saliva connected their lips for a moment before breaking and falling onto me. The droplet mixed with the soap, adding another layer to the slick, slippery feeling that covered me. Yet, despite the strangeness of it all, I felt a deep sense of contentment. I was part of May's world, sharing in her experiences in a way I never could have imagined. May continued to rinse off the soap, her hands now kneading her breasts more firmly. The water washed away the suds, but the tactile memory of her lathering, of Mina's kisses, and the intense sensations remained vivid. Each knead and squeeze felt like a reassurance, a grounding touch that kept me connected to her. Once she was satisfied that she was clean, May stepped out of the shower and reached for a towel. She dried off quickly, the rough fabric brushing against me in brisk, efficient motions. The cool air of the locker room hit me as she moved to get dressed, and I could feel the slight chill contrasting with her residual warmth. She chose a bra that was slightly too small, compressing me even more against her skin, and then pulled on a tight crop top that emphasized her curves. The fabric stretched taut, and my vision went dark, my senses now focused solely on the tactile. Every movement she made, every step and shift, was a new experience of pressure and motion. Later that night, May climbed into bed, the day's exhaustion finally catching up with her. She lay there, a small furrow of thought crossing her brow as if she was trying to remember something. But the thought slipped away, and she settled into the comfort of her bed, not worrying about whatever had momentarily crossed her mind. As the night wore on, I felt myself drifting further from my human memories. The experiences of the day, the warmth, the pressure, the movement, all blended together into a comforting haze. 
The more I became part of me, the more my human past seemed to fade, replaced by the immediate, visceral reality of my new existence. And as the darkness of sleep enveloped us both, I felt a strange sense of peace, content to be a part of something larger, to share in May's world in this unique, intimate way.